dude. Welcome. It's, well, this now is... now into my domain. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's probably the coolest studio I've ever seen. Thanks. People that can't see it, it's dope. This is, this is, uh, been here three and a half years. Yeah. And Ted left, retired last year. So it's been a year on my own here. And I just, I needed an update from how it looked before. It, yeah. You know, and. Did you paint? Yeah. Different color? Yeah. Yeah. It was, the walls I, used to be like this dark, dark blue and the ceiling used to be metallic gold. Oh, wow. Never paint a metallic gold ceiling. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> um, I feel like it'd be very, like, trippy to be in. This so one, it was, it's, it, it, could it was you see your reflection almost? No, it wasn't that. Oh, it wasn't that. It was just like a like a gold enamel paint, and we just oh, we, we gotcha. did like five coats. Gotcha. Um, Jesus, five coats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it looked great. It, the studio looked awesome, and I loved it. And it was just time for your spin. Yeah, your thing. Yeah, and I seen some people just paint their walls green and their ceilings. I'm like. All right, fuck it, let's do it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't. E- I mean, I saw that it was green. I didn't even realize that your ceilings were the same color as the wall. Yeah. Until you said that, and it looks really good, dude. Thanks. You might start a thing. It's oh, it's. Is I, it a thing? Am I yeah. just not caught up to it? Yeah. I'm such a contractor. I just everything's white. <laughs> so it's white, white, gray, and cream. Yeah. Well, no, I never. I don't think I've ever painted a ceiling the same color as the walls before. No. No. Hmm. Do That's it. Pretty wild. I should. I will. It looks amazing. I was this close to painting everything black. Oof. I feel like, wouldn't that, Sean, would that make it dark in the room? It would make it hotter for sure. The walls being black? The Inside? Darker, yeah, it would absorb more light, which would absorb more heat. And really? then it would be hotter in here. Yeah. The, the, one of the coolest tattoo shops I, w- I was ever in, it was down in Manhattan. And the artist, Paul Booth, it's his tattoo studio called Last Rites. Yeah. Went there just to see it the one time, and it's on like the third or fourth floor of this building. And take the elevator up, and someone has to let you in, like unlock it. And you walk in, and it's a bright white art gallery, just like a maze of a hallway, and just all of his artwork, right? And it's just very bright, just a very bright white painted walls and studio lighting and and gallery lighting on on the pieces. And it's, it's beautiful and just very simple. Yeah. And then you walk into his actual tattoo studio and he's got an art gallery manager sitting at a desk. And then you turn to the right and it opens up. He's got two mini opera stages, one he paints on. And then one is like the client waiting area. What? And then it's like a huge room. Yeah, it opens up. It's huge. And then beyond these two mini opera stages is where he tattoos. And it looks like you're inside like a, a gothic castle. And That's it's so it's cool. it's pitch dark except these bright spotlights above where they tattoo. It it was the coolest freaking studio I've ever How been big in. What building was that? It was it was pretty big, but the way he had it laid out, you know. You know he built up some partition walls to make the gallery. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, you walk through that and then bam, it opens up. You're like, holy Jesus, shit. Jesus, yeah. that's yeah. dope as hell. Yeah. I, see, that's what I mean. I'm missing the, I don't have the artsy side of me to me. So I, that's why I appreciate seeing it in you so much. This is, I, I would, you see my shot. It's just like well, you're, you're, whatever works. Yeah, but you do it in the in the building sense of the yeah, art. Very you know, utility. The construction. I'm a very so, utility like, person. Like you get to build the stuff that I like to paint. <laughs> that's so very, it's artistic and just complete you know just m- more mathematical you yeah. know mathematics used and shit like that, that do you get. do you find yourself being creative and the rest of, like does your being a tattoo artist bleed into the rest of your life because my because i'm very organized when i have to build and i'm very exact i feel like my whole life is kind of like that i'm very I like having things in certain ways and order and clean and i do things a certain way almost mm-hmm. like I'm thinking of the building process for each little thing. Yeah. Does your like creative artistic side bleed into your life oh, in it, any way? It 100% does. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Is your house super nice? It's, I, I, man, my apartment is very simple now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I had, I used to have like a big apartment decked all out and stuff and it was just so much to upkeep and maintain I, and, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, it's we just have a 2,700 square foot farmhouse. So, so it's just, clean. it's so much. To clean. And then, but on top of that, I have like three dogs, four cats, four kids. Dude. So there's just, 
food Steve. under every couch, all right. I, hair I, I, all over everything. Listen, I know I asked you this when we chatted last time. How the fuck do you do, like, how do you do it? I don't how, know. How, I don't get it. I really don't. I've said this many times, and I'm actually, my next podcast is with my son, actually. I just thought it'd be cool. And one day he'll listen to these podcasts and go, fuck you, old man. But <laughs> I hate my kids. I hate my kids. I hate my kids. But I love them, love them, love them. Like, you want to trade them for the world. I, I've said this a million times. I would just, if my kid needed a heart to survive, I'd yeah. be like, all right, let's do it tomorrow. Sign me up. Like, I'm ready. But they're so fucking annoying. <laughs> like, they're just <laughs> always breaking something in the house. Or like, one, I'm not. We bought a brand new fridge, like a super sleek, modern looking fridge, all stainless steel. Not one day after having it, one of my kids thought it'd be a good idea to take scissors and like draw on the fridge. But he was <laughs> etching into the stainless steel. <laughs> but, and you could still see it to this day, like a brand new fucking stainless steel fridge. You just try buffing it out. It's just like, no, yeah, it's, it's not coming out. No. He etched it in there. It's a freaking <laughs> sharp pair of scissors. Oh but my that's. God. I love them and I hate them because. And how old is he? Uh, I have an eight-year-old, a seven-year-old, and twin five-year-olds. Twins. Yeah. We wanted to try. We're like, we had one and two. We're like, ah, oh, you know, let's make it three, just so we have like a little family. You know, yeah. like five. I feel like is a good family number, and then bam, twins. <sighs> yeah, and then on top of that, Mabel, my youngest daughter, my only daughter, she's got a disability, so she she can't really. She was born with hydrocephalus, which. Caused the whole slew of problems, like her, her head sw- swell up, and I think that caused a bunch more disabilities. So she's crawled for a long time, and then she just had a surgery to kind of help her regress so she could learn how to walk now. Holy cow! So she's just now at five, like learning to walk, which is awesome. Like, it, she's and she's yeah. a, she's the toughest little kid you've ever seen in your life. Does she like does she um still go to like therapies and yeah. stuff like I can yeah. like OT? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So she goes to like UB has been UB Neurology. Has UB's been got some amazing. Programs. I know. I went there f- to their ortho UB ortho. Uh, I think two years ago. Yeah. When I was having some of those like yeah, medical yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went there for my hand, and dude, they are incredible there. Yeah. yeah. I like. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I like that it's super fancy and nice inside, but yeah. I also don't like that because I know how expensive that crap is. <laughs> I'm like, is this really necessary? <laughs> but at the same time, when you're there and you have really nice waiting rooms and yeah. like all the walls are glass on the outside, she went there for, or no, no, this was um. What's the children's hospital called downtown? Oshai's. 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 And dude, her room is, was on like the 20th floor overlooking the entire city. I'm like, people would pay thousands of dollars to rent this oh, if it yeah, was an apartment. Sure. And it was just like the nicest view of all. You could see the lake and all the windmills. I'm like, Jesus. And now I know why my hospital bills are so expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no words all going. glass wall, super yeah. nice. But again, I'm sure that goes a long way with helping the kids, you know, recover and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Even if you're a patient in general, mm-hmm. it's got to be nice to be in some place nice. Yeah. I've, you know. I've been in some shitty ass medical waiting rooms before and it, it does not make for a pleasant experience. No. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So have you made any progress in finding out with what's been going on with your health? I've, I've taken like quite a long break from like getting all the tests done. Yeah. Um, when this stuff started, let's get right to the root of it. Yeah. Um, in November, 2020 is when I had COVID, you know, yeah. and it just hit me bad for two days. Like it was nothing bad, crazy. And then I was fine. Um, so I, and that's the thing. I don't know if any of this medical stuff has any direct relation to any of it or whatsoever. Um, I think it's a mystery with a lot of the COVID related stuff. Like you just, yeah. There's no way to tell what causes what. Like, yeah, you just you don't know, and you don't trust anything that comes out anymore, and, and what's being said about it. So, um, shortly after that, like, just eating habits changed, and I just wasn't able to hold any food down, especially in the mornings. I would try to eat breakfast, and it, it would just come right back up. Oh my god! And it, and it almost felt like for weeks my body was just ridding itself of. I I, I don't know what it was. Um, and then the weight loss started coming off and I tried eating and whatever food I did eat would either 
come out or go th- right through me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, Do you think it's a digestive thing? Because it's it almost seems like your body's not able to hold the food and like absorb the nutrients and that's what's that's what's been happening like so anything i do eat like it my body now is absorbing a little bit but nowhere near what it should be yeah um and then when so when 10 pounds came off i was like oh i wanted to lose 10 15 anyway like sweet yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) you know like worked out perfect yeah and then it got to you know 20 25 30 35 that had to be um i i got up to i dropped 55 pounds and Seven months, oh six my months. Gosh. So what from what weight to what weight? One ninety eight to Oh, so you were pretty big. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, don't I, was, big. I don't mean I big. was I getting just, up there. You I know. just mean like were you were lifting? You No, no. Oh I was when I first when I was in working for the Department of Corrections. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was I was lifting like right out of the academy and like I was I was putting on some muscle weight. And yeah. then once I got transferred home, you know, I, I started my what they call swap scheduling and yeah. tattooing more and yeah. I just stopped going to the gym. Yeah. But I kept the same eating Isn't habits. Isn't it so hard to keep up, dude? dude? Man. If I didn't do this crap for a living, like the construction, yeah. I would be a fat mess. I would I would go like six months, five, six days a week, and then like one day I would skip for something, and then it would just, nope, I'm not going anymore. Oh. I would miss that one day, and I'd be like, no, I'm done. Isn't it weird how that works? <laughs> like consistency? Yeah. I feel like I do the same thing. I could be so consistent for, like you said, like six months. And then you miss it one day and you're like, eh. Yeah, you get like I'm sick good. or you just feel like off or something. And you're like, I'll just, I'll hold off today. And then one day you turns know? to two. And then the, and then the next day and four. it's just like. Four turns to a week. I don't have like, to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll get back to it next week. Yeah. Fresh week, right? Yep. <laughs> that, that ain't happening. No. <laughs> I'm, we did a tangent. So you were losing weight. 198 yeah. to down to. I got down, I think, like 147 at one point. Um, and. A couple months after the weight started coming off is when the first syncope bout started, where I passed out and blacked oh, out. Is that what yeah, means? Um, I was in Arkansas and I was hanging out poolside, and um, something I just I wasn't feeling right. And I go to get up, and I was sat right back down, and I blacked out, smacked my head right off the pavement. Oh, got a concussion from that. I got home from there and then started seeing the doctors, you know, so seeing my primary and then they sent me to some specialist. I went to cardiologist, neurologist, uh, GI doctor. Oh um, gosh. yeah, dude, I had for about a good six, eight months. I was, I was, I was going for scopes and all the time scans and all this stuff. I could see how that would be like daunting, uh, just you know, making appointments, keeping them in your schedule and like clearing out your whole day. Cause you're yeah. a small business owner like me. Like I feel if I'm not able to stay focused and work when I'm supposed to, it gives mm-hmm. me such a stress. Yeah. I don't even yeah. like going to take care of like anything that's not related to work, right? Dentist, doctor, anything. It was I haven't had a doctor checkup in 10 years. And, and well, and after like the first couple tests I had done and every test came back, this is the healthiest I've ever been on paper my entire life. Ever. Wow. And nothing was wrong. So then they, I think they narrow, were narrowing it down to what's called the vasal vagal nerve. Yeah, you were saying that. And I think it runs alongside your heart, I believe. And like, I think that's the part of it that controls your, you know, speed of digestion or something about your digestion. Oh. I don't know all the facts about this. You know, this is, it's just been, it's been a lot to try to keep up on. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's mentally just draining at some points. And oh God, I believe that. So then, like every it's like every four to five months, I have one of these syncope bouts, like clockwork. Um, before it, it was popping up where I was getting like a nerve swell up in my body, and then four or five days would go by, and then boom, I black out. So now the nerve swell ups kind of stopped. I'm What's not, a nerve swell? Up? Like one day I I had I woke up I had TMJ in my jaw really bad. Oh no. Never had it my whole life. So I go to the dentist, get fitted for night guards. A couple days later, boom, blackout. Uh, four months after that, I woke up. My left hand was so swollen and it hurt so bad. I, I, can't, I had to cancel like three days worth of appointments. On the third or fourth day, boom, blacked out. Whoa. Yeah. The, you know what this makes me think of? And I, I, I don't know why. I think it's like our generation. I've been getting more and more into like holistic type stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Have you ever done acupuncture? Because mm-hmm. when you start talking about nerves, I think about acupuncture. Because I, I had a friend that did it to me years ago, and they were explaining to me, and I think the Chinese, ancient Chinese, really had figured out a lot of shit. Because they had yeah. been around for a long time. Sean, how long have like ancient Chinese been around? Or how like don't they have like the longest running country or dynasty or some crap like that? Yeah, I think you're uh I think you're close, but um I'll look it up for you. Can we look up two things? Like what's yeah. the longest running country slash dynasty? And how long did China last? Because I feel like they just figured out Yeah. Um a lot of stuff about like chi and energies and acupuncture. Like they just really I, I feel like that part of the world really understands the human body. That's what I love about Ted, my my mentor. He yeah. he lived in Japan for a few years as he oh, was growing Japan's up. Like next level. Yeah, and um, he's just he he loves and Japanese culture. Yeah, and you know I'm the, very fascinated the, by it too. And he I love when he talks about the culture and just you know what how how rooted they are in in their culture and and um, you have to admit because they're on an island. They were so isolated. I mean, before like technology and before, yeah. like, you, they were so isolated. Be very self sufficient there. Yeah, you have to be <laughs> like you only have X amount of land, and then you don't have any really like intruders. Really, I mean, I know I feel like the Japanese and the Chinese definitely fought. <clears throat> what do you got, John? So the oldest living empire is actually Japan. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 1, oldest 000. living, as in like oldest continuous current. Oldest continuous no, current. Sure. But are they the longest? Um, they're number one on this list that I just, that I just picked up. Wow. So, yeah. Let me, uh, let me keep going here. So you got the Empire of Japan, the Byzantine Empire lasted 847 years. Who's Byzantine? What's that? Byzantine. I think that was... Middle Eastern? That? Like, yeah. The cradle of, like, civilization back then. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> they got the Holy Roman Empire, 844 years. Ethiopia is actually pretty high on there. Ottoman number seven. Roman Empire that we know. Man, I wasn't even close. China's not even in the top 10. It's not even in the top 10. <laughs> that, but that I am looking that up. Right. So. That cannot be right. I it feel like there were some ancient dynasties, like ancient Chinese dynasties there. Well, like the movie Mulan. I feel like 3,000 3, years is a long right? time. Right? Doesn't that make you think of that time period? Yeah. A Disney movie? Mulan? I do. I got four kids, bro. It's true. I watch a lot of Disney crap. <laughs> My wife, we what, got the Disney Plus app, so you can watch all the Disney movies what, from forever. What cartoon runs your house? Oh, that's good. They don't really watch cartoons now. You know what they do now? YouTube. Really? My kids freaking love... There's this guy, FGTV. Shout out to FGTV. I'm going to have him on as a... <laughs> dude, that dude, the guy that... It's a dad. It's like a, it's like a dad and his kids. Mm-hmm. And they do... The funniest videos ever. And the dad of FGTV, Duddy, is hilarious. He does like these raps in the middle of his videos and then he edits them to like auto tune them and like add stuff to them. It's super <laughs> fucking cool. So, anyways, my kids pretty much watch that. They watch um, Kid City, is okay. another channel they watch. Like, there's a lot of. Uh, me and Sean were talking about this. Like, there's. What's the Chinese kid's name? Uh, which one? The famous one. The probably you, a lot famous, of famous YouTube Chinese, Chinese kid. No, there's one. Oh, jeez. Oh. Ryan? I don't want to look up famous, famous Chinese, Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> No, YouTube. YouTube. He, he's like the top earning YouTuber. Other than oh, like, the kid? Yeah. His channel. His channel. One of the top earning, because I'm pretty sure Mr. Beast is like the... Oh, he's got yeah. My kids watch yeah. Mr. Beast. Yeah. He's the top one. Yeah. Isn't it? You know yeah. what else is crazy? Like He's famous. Yeah. yeah. And he became famous just off making... Like, he's worth billions of dollars. Gives it away. Insane. I'm sorry, we we got way off track. No, 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 because uh, I I'm saying my my sister and my brother in law, who are like two of my favorite people in this entire world, their two kids, my niece and nephew. Yeah, like Bluey runs their household. Oh, they did. Yeah, that Bluey for a while. is life, and nothing else matters that was, when that show is on. Yep. So I remember. I think it was. Was it the beginning of last football season? My parents had the whole family over for the football game and stuff. And yeah. So a friend of mine owns a company, uh, KZ Characters, that does the costumes. So she has oh the characters come gosh. dressed up. So Did they just go nuts? I was like, I, I messaged her. I was like, hey, Kristen. I'm like, could you, like, you want to trade some tattoo work for, like, have a character show up at my parents' That's house? That's so cool. For my niece. 
So Bluey shows up, dude. Oh, Jer- my yeah. Gosh. My niece was like kind of shy at first for like five minutes. And then after that, when she realized it was a life size Bluey, she lost her shit. Oh, it was God. awesome. That's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I do love kids. <laughs> See, like I said, I love them to death. They could be so cute. They could be so fun. And I'm like, I want to do everything for my kids. But then at the same time, there's like, I just, I hate them. <laughs> I see, like, I grew up, like, me and my two sisters growing up now, and just now as an adult, I look back at how we were as children, Mm -hmm. and I just, I'm like, I wouldn't be mad if, like, my parents decided to actually leave one of us at Father Baker. (laughs) Like, I wouldn't have been, I I see it now. (laughs) uh, Who else was I just talking to about this? Was it you guys? I think it was. With you guys? Oh, with Mez. Yeah, yeah. my, My parents are deaf. Uh, my, like Father Baker's. How are they doing, by the way? Good. Yeah. They're doing really good. Yeah, yeah. Just my dad looks like Chuck Norris. Still looks like just, Chuck Norris. I still has still an looks age. Like, <laughs> doesn't literally looks just like Chuck Norris. And my mom's retired um, from the U.S. Customs, living off. Uh, I didn't know she worked at Customs. Yeah. Well, I mean, like office. Not like she was like yeah. an office or anything. But um, yeah, then she's retired. She's doing great. Awesome. Um, acupuncture. Okay. Did you try acupuncture? I did. Uh, this amazing acupuncturist. Yes. Uh, I believe out in, I think it was Amherst or Clarence area. Um, Chinese acupuncturist. She was incredible. She's was been, she she's been doing Chinese it. or was it Chinese? No, she was. Chinese acupuncture. Uh, no, she was. Um, and that's not and a she's been doing, to say, right? I can no. say that. She's been doing it for, God, 40 some years. I think she was doing it. Yeah. And she was incredible. Oh, and I wow. went there for three sessions, three or four sessions. And it just, it wasn't. Didn't solve it. It wasn't doing anything. Damn. Um, it was a great experience. I loved it. I'm yeah. glad I. I'm glad I tried it. Yeah. You know, uh, just it didn't do anything. And did you tell her what was happening? Like, yeah. Did she f- try to focus on that? Yeah. So, and that was another thing, man. Like every doctor I would go to, I would have to start oh. this whole the whole story over from like day one all the way up until. Like when I walked in there. Not that this is anything comparable to what yeah. you've had ex- to experience, but like when you're on the phone with Time Warner Cable or Spectrum, and then like and you call them, you like tell them the problem, and they're <laughs> like, you, that, I like have like a five minute story of what the problem is. And they're like, oh yeah, sorry, wrong department. I'll transfer you. I'm like, why well, you couldn't just cut me off earlier? And like, then you got to go to the next person. Then you got like sum the whole story, and they're like, oh yeah, no, wrong department. We don't handle that. That's actually billing. I'm like, oh my fucking god. Yo, unrelated, it took me two years to get my primary email on my Xbox account changed. Because when I first started Xbox back in 2006, I used my girlfriend's email at the time because I didn't have one. And you guys didn't even use that? And that one totally, like, she didn't use it anymore. (laughs) So it took me two years to call Xbox, like, Microsoft uh, customer service to get it switched over. That's crazy. Sorry. So that was just sorry, my little my little relatable topic. <laughs> but yeah, I could see how that's that like that well, does and it's, get well that gets mentally, I'm sure and it's, it's not the, mentally it's, exhausting. And, and it wasn't the doctor's fault because no, you know yes, they, no. they would get their file from the other doctor and yeah. then I would walk in and be like, All right, it seems like it seems like we have this going on. I'm like, Well, let me start from the beginning. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a little bit more complex. Yeah, you know, because there I, I haven't gotten any answers. All the tests come back fine. And then the only way they were going to, to somewhat get an answer is if I was literally hooked up to an EKG while I had a pass out bout. Oh, my God. Which happened at the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. Well, you had an EKG machine on you at the Chili Peppers? <laughs> yeah, I had a, my last pass out bout was last month at the Peppers concert up in Syracuse. And how did you get time that? Did the EKG, was it just right after? Well, so I was waiting in the merch line. Passed out. My girlfriend was with me. She was standing by my side. Yeah. So she knows exactly what to do. So as soon as I, as soon as I was feeling like that, I went and sat down up against the wall, and she was like, "Are you, you feeling okay?" I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> and then right when you I said know, that, yeah. I got my tunnel vision, and then it went click. Oh. God. And the weirdest thing happens. It was the last time, or the last two times. To where when I blacked out, when I came to, Mm -hmm. I felt, I knew my eyes were open, but I was blind. I couldn't see anything. Oh my gosh. And for about eight to 10 seconds, I was panicking because I had no recollection where I was, no memory. I didn't, I I had no idea, except I was trying to feel around for things and I had, I 
couldn't see, I couldn't hear, nothing. And then oh. 10 seconds, my vision would come to. And It has to be so terrifying. Yeah. So they took me back into the medical room. They ran a bunch of tests. So they had the EKG stuff hooked up to me. Mm -hmm. And I was standing there for like, I was sitting, laying on the bed for about 10, 15 minutes. And um, it started hitting me again. I, this time, it was this was probably the scariest moment because I felt like it was slowly drift, like I was slowly drifting. And it was for about 15 seconds. I, I had no energy. I couldn't lift my arms, but I was just like, what? But I, I didn't fully click out. Yeah. Then I, no. I came to, and I was just like cold, you know, cold sweating for like 10 minutes. And, um, after that got some water in me and, Made it back to the seats 10 minutes before the peppers went out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's so trippy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just in my brain trying to think, like, what could cause that? You got something? Well, so the rest of the show, we're like, after that episode happens, do you worry that it's going to happen again right away? Or after it happens, do you kind of feel this relaxation that, like, okay, now I'm good for a while? Like, did you enjoy the show after that? Oh, the, yeah. Thank God I was... So it's happened a couple different ways after I came to. Um, after every time I come to, I'm, like, I feel like I was hit by a bus for maybe oh. about 10 minutes, you know? And I'm just, I'm super, like, I'm drenched in sweat and oh. just dripping and then I get super cold, and then I'm fine. Um, there was one time that when I came to, it felt like I was hit by a bus for about three days. This it sound it does sound like a neurological thing almost. Yeah. Dang, that's yeah. crazy. So when you say hit by a bus, does it like like you're sore like physically, or Physic are you just I'm met like physic physically sore? So drained, all your muscles hurt. No energy. Do you like? tense up like is it yeah. kind of like a seizure event? there's uh a couple times i think three times it happened i locked like kind of like locked up really yeah or i think one side i i don't know it's Can't remember. It, yeah it's been just a lot of different times and it's just do you they what, start to kind of um, what's tony Ferentino, right mike's brother he had like a thing going on with him i'm not saying this like mm -hmm. i don't mean to um, uh, what's the word Make it seem simple. But like he was posting about a struggle he had and he would do it in Facebook posts. Oh, dude, a lot of people are going through this shit. It's, it's, a, it's a large scale. My, I think my one cousin uh, is, has been going through it for the last couple of years, even Your before I was. Symptoms? No, she's, but it's as severe, I think, um, but just different symptoms. I don't know what her really? symptoms have been. Well, his, um, I know, was like a digest. I just mean, I was so fascinated at his story. Like I was, re every time he would post, and I just didn't know if people, like, I hope he listens and he realizes how cool that was. Like, it was cool to go through his journey with him. Not that it's cool to have that shit happening to him. Yeah. But, like, I like that he opened up about it. And, yeah. like, I could follow. And, like, now I'm following you, like, I want to know what it is. Like, I hope you get better. Yeah, you know I, what it's, I mean? It's like, been weird because it's been three, oh, geez, you know, three years, three and a half that this has been going on. I haven't, like, I haven't said a word on social media about it. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I, a it's a pretty private thing. Plus, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, what are you gonna say about it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, guys, I pass out every yeah. four to five months. Just Hashtag, let you know. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, <laughs> yeah. I get it. I um, get it. So it's just been trying to cope with it at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, the eating has gotten better the last yeah. year or so. You know, I'm definitely able to eat throughout the day, oh. uh, which is good. You know, I just getting it to work with whatever the hell else is going on has been yeah. trying a it little bit. It's such like an intrinsic, it, it is all like um, almost seems to go together. It's so many, yeah. so many different things. And I've been afraid to, with the weight loss, I've been afraid to like go to a gym to like work out to try to put on weight because my energy levels have been down because like, of that too yeah if i go to the gym for like two hours i'm probably ain't gonna do shit the rest of the day wow <laughs> that's but i mean it's it's not like you're you're super big or anything i mean if, you, if you're able to stay so why do the doctors say you're the healthiest you've ever been just like all my everything else i went for all my blood work all this other stuff and it's everything, everything is spot on wow yeah you usually could attribute it to like a mineral deficiency or something like that or nothing nothing yeah it's just but it does make sense if it was a nerve that it wouldn't really be affected by at this point i really think it's something like ted the last 
couple years of, you know, really, he really changed my life and my outlook on a lot of things. Yeah, you were saying it last time. Um, and when it came to like the heat of this medical stuff, when I was going to all the testing and stuff like that, you know, I would, he was here every day with me. Yeah. You know, I would see him every single day I was here. And that's going to um, be nice to someone to talk to about it. Yeah, yeah. And just the connection him and I have, you yeah. know, I've never been that comfortable just, you know, with somebody that, and I trust that much of yeah. somebody, you know, good, with, you? with my life. Of, yeah, yeah. Hey man, this is what's going on. And he doesn't sugarcoat it. Yeah. You know, I have a couple people like that in my life and it's, it's a great feeling. Yes, it is. You know? Um, yeah. I, 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 the only thing I can relate to is I talk to a lot of people Yeah. and you're right. It's a totally different thing when you're super tight with somebody Yeah. where you can talk to them and tell them things. You don't have to worry about being judged. You don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. I'll like call him all the time, can... like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing this. Yeah. You know, if it even relates to the business or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, if I run by, it just happened a month and a half, two months ago. I yeah. ran an idea by him, and he's like, don't fucking do that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so why? Straight? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah and, uh, he's like, like it's going to be, you know, you know, A, B, and C, and this is what you wanted. You know, this is what you say you want to do and what you're passionate about. This is what you... Sh- how you should be, this is not the direction you want to go. I'm like, fuck, you're right, man. Yeah. Thanks, dude. But see, that's what I mean. It's nice to have people or a person you can talk to like that because yeah. I do this a lot. I have a lot of grand ideas. I have a lot of thoughts. I'm always thinking about shit. Blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, is that, am I crazy? Is that like a good idea? And it's so nice to have somebody you can just, hey, dude, can you just hear about this idea and talk yeah. about what you think? Because I'll get like a, when I think I have a good idea, that's all I see. I think I got a great idea. I call them breadcrumbs, dude. Yeah. Like it, it's this when when I was going through this phase of just coming up with these ideas and I would like half pursue them. Yeah. And then they would just fizzle out. Yep. And I'd, you know, I'd get pissed. Oh, it because it would just happen over and over and over. You know, and Ted's like, listen, man, you're gonna have a hundred of these bre- you know, well, I he just ideas, um, you know, a week or however so long, and he goes, sit on them all. He goes, you just, you put them in the pot in your mind and you know, it's, you bring them out and just when you want to, you give them its attention it needs. And if you really think about it, you're like, "Eh, you know, that can really sit back there for a while. Like it's not a priority. This this brings up something that Sean told us earlier today. Sean, can you tell everybody about the um, pictures, the experiment with the pictures? Oh yeah. Let me tell you this. Yeah. Um, So what you just said made me think of what he told us earlier. Okay. And this is um, me being right, by the way. Again, this is me <laughs> jumping in. I was focusing on this. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm only like half involved in the conversation. Okay. <laughs> but okay, so this experiment was explained to me earlier today. And you have 100 artists, right? Okay. Um, take 50 of them, put them in group A. 50 of them, put them in group D. <laughs> oh. Why not? Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, put my group in group D. Yeah, yeah. Douche. So group A, <laughs> group A has to take one photograph and they have unlimited time to get the production right, the equipment right, the lighting, everything right, right? And then group D, they have to um, unlimited amount of pictures. So they have all the time to do trial and error, Ooh. but, um, you know, less limited editing. time. Yeah, less editing. So group D actually had the better picture because they were able to experiment, try, Mm -hmm. get and see what worked when the production team that had all the time to edit before their one snapshot um, actually had a less quality picture. So get into it. This is jump into it. Me and Sean's personality differences. Like I'm, I'm just a go, 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 do, 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 do. I really like that uh, outlook on it though. Isn't that cool? It was an experiment that they did. It's like it, it shows you, I think what it's showing people is that, you should try lots of things. You yeah. should fail a lot. You should gain a lot of experience. Just do, do, do. And then when you find the thing you like, you'll find it. Like, yeah. then run with it. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, if you just one track mind, like just one thing and you don't really deviate at all, like, you're going to get better, but is it that much better? When you get to try lots of things, you get to really almost chase your passion, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of how I took it. That's and that's what I, I really love about, you know, just following this art journey too you know it's just i finally let go of that having a five ten year goal i'm like nope it's done like you put a time on it and i feel like i have to get certain amount of projects done in order to get to that you know checkpoint or goal whatever you want to call it and i'm like 
I stopped doing it all because I was racking my brain over all these projects. And I'm like, this is a journey. Yeah. It's a marathon. It is not a sprint. I'll get to them when I get to them and just, I'm enjoying it. Yes. You know, as I've gotten older, I've realized that, you know, all the cliche sayings, you always hear like, oh, you're going to fail a bunch of times. And <laughs> when you're young, you're like, no, I won't. I won't fail. I'll be the one that doesn't. Like, I'm going to go do this and I'll be great at it. And then you, like, until you've really experienced your first failure, which it could be a various uh, different things. Like, I, I mean, my business, I don't think is a failure, but I've had low points to where it's like it puts a lot of stuff into perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It really is a long ass journey. And I, you hear about these people who have had all this life experience and you're like, you did what? You were a limo cab driver. Oh, you were a construction worker. You did this. You did that. You started this business. You started that business. You failed. And they're still just like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But it's a journey. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. You, you never know who you get to meet. And like the, the careers I had before, you know, the time I, I spent in them, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade them for anything because of the people I got to meet. You know, yeah. I spent 12 years in, you know, men's retail. I know. And, and, you were killing it. You know, oh, I killing. loved I worked for Men's Warehouse and I loved it there. It was such a fun company. Yeah. And they they treated their employees really well. They were all about partying. Yeah. You know? well, I mean, I mean which kinda... I did all through my 20s. Yeah, right. I feel like it was and, a good job for you at the um, time too. You know, it's, it, it's funny though because like had so much fun in that company and just I was so far away. From, I just I never expected to be here you know, 15 years. You've almost had like after three that, different lives, you three know, careers. Yeah. The men's warehouse thing, the CEO and, and the, thing, and, and the transition this. from retail to law enforcement was easy. Yeah. Cause it was like just career for career. And then it didn't hit me till about eight months after 10 months after I left and was here full time. So that you were ten, on your own. 10 months after that, like Ted was gone yeah. for two months and it took me two months of being here alone and being like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> you know, and it hit me one day like, no, this is the rest of my life. Yeah. And it, dude, I, it was... No paycheck? It was scary. Like, you know, you just have depressing, like screaming, crying in the pillow some nights. And really? It, yeah, it just happens, dude. And it yeah. just, it just emotions that come out that I, oh, I, I didn't feel for years. And boom, dude, they like just... I don't, I don't say really like... Like, I don't believe you. Like, I'm saying really, like, I've had those too. Like, yeah. I, that's I, well, one thing pe that I've People hear was, those, by the way, and they automatically think, like, oh, my God, were you okay? Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah. No, it's... People Life. can feel emotions, by the way, yes. and let them out, and it's okay. So when, when people <laughs> ask me, like, hey, what's up? I'm like, hey, what's going on? How are you? And, like, people go, oh, I'm good. How are you? And I'm like, eh, life. And everybody instantly always wants to go, oh, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing's wrong. Yeah. Life. Like... I have ups, I have downs, I have great days, I have bad days, I have days with good and bad, and I'm like, I've had, as I get older and older, I've had days where my emotions swing like 10 times in a day, yeah. where I'm furious, then super happy, then really depressed, and then really excited, and then down at the bottom, and then back up again, and then when I get home, like seeing my kids, I forget it all, and I'm happy again. Like, yeah, it's a roller coaster, but... But I, I was never like a kid when I was like... Not a kid, but like early, you know, late teens, early twenties. You're yeah. just like, I'm, yeah, I'm, you're just, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. A kid, like whatever. Like, I want to. I can't wait to party. You know, when's when's the next party? What am I gonna do? Like, you just the worst. The worst you felt is when you were hungover. Oh, that was like the worst emotion you would have. Like I, my twenty. You know, now it's. Do you feel like we are? We were taught or for so long to like suppress having those bad days yes. or if you felt like that like if you were if you were to feel that like you were supposed to keep that shit to yourself yes i i think it's a i think that's a man's journey sometimes yeah sorry nothing <laughs> um, that that suppression of feelings is what that positive toxicity toxic posi is. Oh! that's the suppression that's what it actually is that not that sense. you're overly positive all the time it's when you're supposed to suppress the other feelings because you're expected to be positive all the time. Oh, yeah. I see. That's right. You did bring that up. Thank you. Yeah, I had one of my guests. He's a, um, he's a therapist. And he was telling me about toxic positivity. And I didn't really understand it. And then we looked it up because I brought it up, up again. Excuse me, on, on one of my other podcasts. And um, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. 
Yeah. Yes. I guess that's, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking when he was saying that. Like, when we were growing up, you were almost like, you should always be happy. Like, you just, like, don't. Yeah. That's kind of like toxic. Yeah, not, nothing wrong with uh, Ryan Phillips with his Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 Not, not to discredit anything he said. I think he said the right things. I just think that the meaning of toxic positivity um, came out wrong. Uh, I see. It's like being overly positive like you are, Steve. Yeah. Is a good thing. Yeah. Like you, you can't have a I negative. If you're, time. if you're positive all the time and you bring that light to other people, Steve, can you just be a dickhead every once in a while? Yeah. 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 Can we just you're put that on the no, like, Can we talk yeah. about that? It is for me cringy, hard to be mean. Like because I, I am a small business owner now. I'm a boss, and it's totally not in line with my personality. It is so hard to look somebody in the eye and tell them that they fucked up, and like. I'm like, and I know how bad they feel about fucking up, and I'm just yeah. like, but I have to be there and be stern about it, and I just hate it because it's not me. Yeah, I just want to be like, it's okay, it's all right, dude. Just like, this do better man, next time. It's all right. This like, man, shit happens. Like, yeah, I, it's this just is how, how we're gonna do it so that shit doesn't happen again. Right. <laughs> I just, I, I'm not very good at that. Like, I, I feel it makes me very uncomfortable to be mean, and I feel like there's people out there who are just okay. Be, like that's their thing, being mean. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm so nice. Be, uh, I mean, does I mean, really, in any of those situations, does anyone ever really have to be mean? No. Well, unless listen, unless a, I mean, unless a person's just being a dickhead. Yeah, well, that, that, <laughs> there are know, situations. You know. Like that. Um, well, you were you were a CEO. You were saying. Yeah. So was there times that it was appropriate for you to be? Yeah, we asshole. can just edit out that last part I said before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, yo, absolutely. Like I was a me. No, uh, honestly, as an officer, like when I ran a unit, I tried to be as fair as I could. Yeah, because I knew, like, I worked in the first facility I worked in was a medium security, so it was dormitory setting. So you'd actually both facilities were set up the same way. Yeah. And it would just be me at a desk in front of like 50 inmates, just roaming around. Like they're not in cells. And then there's a common area they can walk out and cook and stuff like that. So, um, listen, at any... Sound kind of, sounds nice. But like, listen, man, at any, at any one of those points, like you piss off the wrong couple guys, like... It's 50 on one until, you know, you can, if you can pull your pin until response, like you'll get your shit kicked in, wow. you know? So I was always told like in the academy, my teachers in there were awesome. They're like, listen, you just run a fair dorm. Yeah. You know, there's going to be guys that run the shit in there. And so I found the guys that ran the shit be like, all right, listen, guys, like you can get your little extras, but. You know, I expect this out of the dorm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Setting that standard, setting that Yeah, tone. and listen... And, and but being fair about it. Yeah, and they wanted their little extras. And I was like, all right, whatever. I was yeah. like, You're, they're not asking for anything outrageous. Right, right. You know, and uh, my dorms were always quiet. I had to break up a couple fights over a couple of years there, but it was nothing major. That's nice, though. You know? That's um, good. Yeah, I never had any major issues. Well, that's what I was going to say. But I didn't, I didn't work in, like... <clears throat> I didn't work in a, in a max. Right. You know, my buddies that worked in there, like... The stories that they... Holy shit. Like, I've heard. Nah, I'm good. I, CEOs, <laughs> I didn't realize how many people were became CEOs. Like, that's a, there's a lot of people that, that employs. There's a lot of... It's a big part of our society. There's prisons. a lot of prisons in Western... Like, closer to the Western New York region. Really? Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a higher population, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. And, but yeah, th I found that there's a very fine line. Because what I'm working on is being assertive and not aggressive. Because mm -hmm. that, that's a... I feel like that's where the meanness comes from is there's times that I have to be assertive and I almost, I, I, I value being a strong, you know, like the image of a strong man, you know, like I, I value mm -hmm. that. Like I, I value respect. I value, and I feel like the fine line men have to, uh, to walk is the difference between aggression and assertiveness. Like, I don't think it's okay to be aggressive mm -hmm. unless you like, you know, I mean, there's times like sports kind of, you know what I mean? But like, assertive is the better Agreed. tone to have. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. you should stand up for yourself, stand up for your values, stand up for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And that comes with a little bit of like an aggressive talk, but it's not aggressive. Like you're not trying to hurt nobody. You're not trying to do anything bad, but you have to kind of like stand your ground. Stand your ground, but you're not like pushing them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thing, exactly. You know, and that's a big part of like what I wanted this. We've talked about this. Just, I don't want to have any 
guests come on here and then like an argumentative person. I feel like there's yeah. just people out there who are naturally inclined to be argumentative. And I don't want that because I would like a, an assertive person. Like if you are, if we're talking about a hot topic, I want to hear your perspective. I want to hear your side of it. And I want you to be honest and, and assertive about what you're saying, not just like trying to jam stuff down my throat. Cause I feel like that's all the argument is like yeah. who can yell louder, you know? Cause the I think person. there's also gotta be a mutual respect there too, which yes. I think is lost. It's just like, especially now with everything I going know. on that if everyone feels like their voice has to be heard and if it's not heard, then there is an issue. Yeah. No, your voice doesn't have to be heard. Like you're just, there's so many things ac- asking for acceptance when yeah. and it attention. Just, it all it is is with yourself anyway. So why do you need an accept? And this, you know, this could be for any topic. You mean like really. external validation type thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all it's yeah. all validation. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted. That's why I started this. I wanted people to see and hear conversations. Like mm-hmm. just to see how easy they are. They're not. They are. So that's why I want. We have to bring. I gotta bring notes, or you guys can give me notes, because um, we gotta talk about some controversial topics. I want to get better at this. I mean, what should we dive we can, into? Uh, I mean, like I said, my what is my go? I, I feel like I have like a three or four go tos. You do. Uh, it's religion. It's politics. Money and oh, it's politics. More. Politics is government. The politics cult, is government. The right? Cult cast. Well, taxation. What is it? Taxation. Taxation. Government. <laughs> government. Oh, yeah, taxation. government. Ice baths. John, I do have a question though, because you've. Yeah. Um, Mentioned his name a couple times, and I don't know if you fully explained it. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is Ted to you? Ted. Uh, Ted is... Is he like a mentor? Best friend, mentor, uh, teacher, my guru. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, we met... I ran into him... Shit. 2015? 2014, 2015 at the Niagara Falls Tattoo Expo. He had a booth, I had a booth, and um, I was just walking around, and I seen him, and I was like... Never heard of the shop, and I was like Buffalo, New York. And I was looking at this dude's work. I was like, "Oh shit! Like, who the hell is this guy?" And he's from California. So him and um, his girl moved here, and they moved here to take care of some of her family things. Oh, and they were, say. yeah. Like, who moves from California to Buffalo? I know, man. He went- I, I, whenever every time I meet anybody new and I hear that they moved here, I'm like, "Moved here from where?" Because you know, this is Buffalo. Like- I'm like, I need to know how you ended up here. Why, why did you decide to move here again? But it's usually always that same it's, reason. Like it's, it's always, always family, family or, or something yeah. like blood related or marriage, to get you back like here. Somebody, you yeah. married somebody from here, but I'm like, yeah, leave, go back to where you're from. Like, this place is cold. It's so cold. <laughs> yeah, what, no, what ended up being like was supposed to be a couple years they ended up being 10 years for them wow. and um, for some reason he put up with me for so many years oh, until, until no until I like You're an awesome finally man. crossed over to like full just time. full time yeah, yeah yeah you know he I would always I always get my balls busted for that yeah, you yeah. know because I I it was treated as a as a side hustle for so many years but Even not, though it was my true passion. Yeah, but that's know? what we were just saying. That like, yeah. you're almost pushed, like in school to like you got to get like a job, you got to get a school career. and we're raised, man. To to especially our generation too, we were raised to get into that, you know, that retirement gig, whatever yeah, you know, yeah, whatever you yeah. want to call it, the American you have to dream. Have a plan. Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah, have like yeah. a path. It's got to be a certain and, uh, way, dude. It had a leash on me for a lot of years. And it finally gave way. And now I'm like understanding it, which yeah. is cool. You yeah. know, um, just getting to know what the hell went on for so many years. And now yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So now when other things arise, it's they're, you know, just a lot easier to handle. Yeah. You know, it gives it you that little that. bit of resilience. Yeah. Um, where were we? Well, before we <laughs> get into your uh, controversial topics, one other thing I want oh, to mention because of yeah. stories you were telling. Yeah. So men's warehouse, right? Yeah. Do you remember working at After Hours? Yes. What they bought out? Yes. Yo, so Dude, I John love I, that. John. We used to work. We used to work together at After Hours Formal Wear, and that's how he. I think you were my supervisor. Like he, he started, and John instantly went to like corporate, like management. Like I don't know how, because like we were still in high school, same grade. And you were like my boss. I was like, <laughs> like instantly, I was like, why do I have to report? He's younger than me. That job yeah, is so good. Yeah, that job. Yeah. His locker's next to mine, bro. So, but, that job is so fun, dude. So fun. So one th- one story I wanted to tell about that, because I don't know if you did this at Man Warehouse. Probably not. But um, so in the there was like the front displays. It was at the Walden Galleria. So you had this little shop, two big windows, and then the door right in the middle, right? 
It had these front displays. It would be like a mannequin with like a suit on come prom season. So a couple of different mannequins. I used to dress up in one of those like suits stand in the window get out and then like scare people as they like went by because they think i was a mannequin did you do that with me because like i did it like every day i was there i was like i don't oh, think yeah, i yeah. did it but i remember you were there like you did it the one time dude that was hilarious. you should have filmed it people do that now with like the ghillie suits and crap and like they like well, film that, it it's hilarious we were back in high school it was first day of school every year 20... we were renting tuxedos to wear the first day we, of school we used to get limo buses to drive us to school to wear our tuxedos to yeah. promote like for Come free on. Yeah. yeah yeah but this was before smartphones were in everybody's I pocket know, I know. We, so they like had there all was these little no that would have went viral for sure oh, back yeah. in the day but it there totally wasn't viral were, uh, bef- at that time no it so. did exist it just wasn't to us younger kids because that's when i feel like no, a lot of things yeah. started like that 06, 07, 08, 09, you always hear these like famous people now and like all the successful stuff now. Like that's when they started to jump on it quick. And now they're just getting yeah. like it's like a 10, 15 year journey of them continually growing that from those years. Yeah. I, think I, I feel like there's always 05, 06, 07, 08, right when the crisis happened. You're, you're seeing it a lot on social media and TikTok now of like, you know, these people that will explode and become, they call them like overnight sensations, right? Yeah. And if you dig a little bit into their past, they've been doing this shit for 12, 13, yeah, 14 yeah. years. And but it's then just there's like, a, there's a, they finally there's got- There's one day where there's a jump. You know, or that, you know, That's whether it's- That's team, I told you. Or whether it's you <laughs> figure out the algorithms or you get that, you know, hit and then I think it it's, takes I off. think it's, a, it's an exponential thing. And I've talked many times about this. I love ex- exponents. Exponents? Exponential. Exponents. Exponents. So like I think it's like the law of like two to four, four to eight, okay, eight to sixteen, and then one day the number's so big, and then the jump to the next number is that overnight sensation. You okay. go from a million, <coughs> a million followers to two million followers, and that might be your big like. I mean, to gain a million followers overnight, you know what I mean. But then, yeah. then it's two million followers to four million followers. It, it happened. It happened to Boom. one of my tattoo clients, and it happened to her in a weird way. <laughs> Excuse me. She posted a video of like a funny video of her daughter, her baby daughter on TikTok, and it went viral out of nowhere. Really? And I and I don't think she's one. I don't think she posts like regularly. And she's like, yeah. She goes, and I was tattooing her, and she was talking about. It. She was, yeah. She goes, I would open up my phone even to like this day, and there will be like four thousand notifications what? or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That has to be so trippy. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, I were you expecting that she goes just just a post of her kid one day? Bam. I I'm not gonna lie. I definitely get a dopamine hit when I see that red notification at the bottom of my Facebook. Is, that, is it is it my time? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like especially like when we post this stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Like yeah. when I post stuff and then I see a bunch of likes, I'm like, oh, I get like a little. Well, mush. you're saturated because like I mean, you know as well. Like you want to know where your shit is getting oh, seen. Oh yeah. And I'm. I hate to admit it, I am saturated in social media, yeah. but I've accepted one, it's the new way of doing things. Yes. I was just and say that. two, you just gotta regulate it a little bit. But I'm yeah. I const- I look on the analytic things yes. more important than, than anything. Than doom scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, trust me, dude. I do just you as much too. as I do it's, just as much as that. Do you fi- do you guys do this like at the end of the day when you finally get to like chill? Don't you like I'll put something on the TV, but I won't even watch the TV. I'll just sit there and just go. Video. Yep. Video. Uh-huh. Like, do you guys do that too? Yeah, All that's every person in America. Every night. <laughs> every night. I'm like, I'm gonna watch The Sopranos. Three minutes in. Uh, yo, this is a funny video. I gotta right? send this to. <laughs> and then the algorithm, like whatever my algorithm is, knows me like the back of my own freaking hand. It's bad because like every it's... video is better than the next, better than the next. But and I'm like, this is hilarious. This is even more funny. And then it just gets me down like the rabbit hole. Whoa. Down, down the, the rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. That's gotta be. That's something. It's something. It's something. Down the rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it goes as far as AI is reading even your your cadence on when you text certain friends certain fucking videos. Do you remember man. seeing the movie? Because I'll text something to a friend and then they'll respond. Yo, I just seen that two minutes ago. I'm like, it's creepy. Mm-hmm. Creepy. Yeah. Now, what movie was this? Oh God, it was about. It was about, oh my gosh, I can't remember the movie. I'm remembering scenes. It was like the um, the like the like scenes in the movie were about the computer, but the computer was like people in a room trying to keep this kid addicted to his phone. Oh my gosh. Like the Disney movie? Like the Disney movie with movie? all the emotions? 
Like no, the man. no, that that's like a, good, a terrifying that's a good... Disney movie, though. No, <laughs> no. So yeah, but I, just, was... I can't remember what it was, but like, if the kid wasn't looking at his social media, like the people in the fake room, like it was like the it was it was people impersonating like the computer, like oh we need to no- send a notification to his phone, and then when they when we send a notification to his phone, um, send this to him after, and then it would like keep him hooked to the social media. To see how long they can keep him on the phone for, yeah, or and then they like were that. like they had uh, all those analytics and stats like on the screens, like it was like a big like war room with like all screens on it, and it was like, oh yeah, he's been clicking on the phone for thirty seven seconds. Let's see if we can get that up. All right, and then like oh like they had this data and this statistic, like oh he was not looking at a screen, like we gotta send a a, a set of titties so he'll look at the screen, like and it was just so creepy. How how many of these movies are gonna come out about like shit that is. Haha, ha, like that would be funny if that's the way is controlling him. And, and it is. Or what's going to happen. It or, all the time. And then you see in interviews, especially on social media and stuff, like, oh, did you see this comment dropped by this celebrity? Like, hey, we need to watch out. I'm telling you guys. And we just, we keep laughing about everything. You know, whether it's, did you see the movie, whether it's Grandpa uh, Don't Joe. Look Up? You ever seen the movie yes, Don't Look Up? Um, that's right. what I think yeah, about. Yeah. I'm like, if, shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> like if a meteor was coming, that's I feel like that's really how people would act. They'd be like, ha, ha, ha. and on today's uh, news episode, there's a meteor coming down to Earth, and everybody's like, ha, ha, ha. and the next topic. Wait, don't you get it? How, Dad. F- how fast do you think our culture and society can commercialize something? A meteor coming to hit Earth? Like a major... Catastrophic. Elon Musk. That's that's the movie. That's literally what happened. Like, you know, like th- their version of like a super rich scientist dude. Yeah, is supposed to send up a bunch of rockets to stop it, but then they figure out that there's money to be made off of it, and, but then all the rockets fail and they die. <laughs> like best ending to a movie I've ever seen, where everybody just dies. <laughs> you know, NASA just sent a rocket to an asteroid to see if they could move it in real time and to get practice. away from our yeah. uh, trajectory. So that just tells me right there why they're practicing that. There probably is one coming. This that well, whole no, event no, might no, actually no. take place. I don't place. think practicing means it's going to happen. You have to practice if you think it's a possibility. I don't think that means it's, it's always a happen. listen. Always if there's a, a meteor heading towards this Earth, I would, and I re, uh, I would put more faith in the Russians just taking the fucking reins and balls of the situation. A bunch of nukes and just and just bam, sending bam, it bam, out bam. there and be like, listen, you guys <laughs> over there are fucking diddly dallying to yeah. taking your time because you gotta run the shit oh, through fucking a thousand chains to get an approval. Like, don't worry, we got this. Like, it's already taken care of. They just a huge ass nuke up there and just yeah. blow it to smoke. And then they'll be like, alright, it's done. And then we'll <laughs> still be here like, but one side still said this. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, I mm. would gr- agree with you. Before the war with, I uh, no, not Iraq. Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah. I, I don't know why I went to Iraq. Because they are taking a long time to take Yeah, but they're also Ukraine. not dropping any nukes or nothing. No, I they're mean, not. I, I think respect, ground, thank you. Because yeah, once you do battle, that, it's... Ground yeah. battle is, is tough. I think... Yeah. They're I in think, the trenches. Like, dude, this is like old school war. That's what I'm saying. There. Rogan said that there's... You can... It's gross now because you can see it. Because everybody has a cell phone. And they yeah. have body cams yeah. and everything. Like, you're seeing... People getting bludgeoned to death, shot, blown off. I just, saw, I just watched somebody yeah, in the trenches get their leg or arm blown off, and their partner or whoever was behind him ran in, like shot the guys that shot him, so that they could get him out of there that was wounded. And just it's straight up trench warfare over there right now. Oh, by the way, I feel like I should say this, and especially in today's world, I didn't mean I take Russian sides on things. <laughs> I'm just saying, in the event of it's a meteor, documented, bro. It's already <laughs> in, the, it's in already the event the of a fucking meteor coming he's towards a, this earth. He's a, a Russian spy <laughs> pretending to be an American. Only Hashtag in the event communist. of a meteor coming <laughs> yeah, towards right, this right. earth. No, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. But you know, you don't just know. The, just this what you're saying. They still have hypersonic missiles. That's what I'm saying. Like, just because they're not doing, they're not winning so fast. Do they? I don't though? think that they're not. Or do they just portray that they have them to Ooh. to look like they're in super? Yeah. Why didn't they use them? Exactly. Kind of like a flex. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just. But I guess what's the point of using a hypersonic unless it's attached to a nuke? I I don't know. Yeah, you know I feel like if they wanted to take over the country, they double dip it right next shit. door. It should have been easier for them. But that's that's, I, I think they also are not trying to destroy the infrastructure and the city. Because they want to take it over. They don't just want to kill them. I think that's part of it. Like, Because if you, if it was just up to firepower and they were just like, we just want to blow you off the map, I'm sure they could. I think they want to get Ukraine back. So they're probably, they're probably strategically trying to take 
Ukraine. I think it's, that makes sense. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean because they probably want it. They they want to. They don't want it. Like gone. Why would you, yeah. Why would you want to kill everyone in a land then? Yeah. Then there's nothing. To, there's yeah. This is. I think that the, our country f- is farming us. I have that thought a lot. That the United States government is just farming us via taxes. Why would you ever want to kill off you, like any population? Because now I think governments and corporations look at human beings as capital. So it's like we don't want to kill everybody in Ukraine because we want to use them for taxes and we want them to grow the economy. So like, can you believe, our economy as Russia can get bigger? Can you believe being treated like a fucking current? Like, like I think that's how some of them look at us. That's why. It's part. It's a big part of my uh, mantra about taxation and government. You Look, like to I'm say ready. it like I'm five ready. out of seven podcasts so far. <laughs> I, it's 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 a big thing for me. I, I I can't believe it's not more of a big thing for a lot of people. And I, I said this in my last podcast. Like I can't believe if you watch the Patriot with Mel Gibson, mm-hmm. you see the things that they're doing to the colonists, and I'm like, it's not even close to what they're doing to us now, and how much taxes they're collecting and all this stuff. Like. And they got all upset and started revolutional for like, a, what was it? A penny tax, we figured out? A three cent increase in taxes? It was, um, what was it? Like equal to three cents. Yeah, it was, like a, it was like a three to cent To like three dollars an hour or something. Yeah, yeah it was pretty. It so was if your taxes went from $1,900 a month to 1903, like $1,903, that's what they started the American Revolution for a three dollar increase. Jesus. And, and we're over here, like, just taking... My, my rent goes up $100 a year. Every year. Like, I, I, I just expect it. I expect it. Even if point. you lock in the interest, then you got taxes that go up. Yeah. Then you got escrow I that know. goes up. Like, it's never fixed. It, it You're all, always paying more money. Do, okay, it all goes don't you guys up. think that we are headed down a path that is not good? Because it just can't keep going like this. It can't just always... Every year, there can't be just... More growth, more growth, more taxes, more I, costs, more of this. Every year. I've, I've asked a couple of people this. I'm like, how do you feel about our government as far as being a stable government? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no. And multiple people said, and I'm like, all right. I'm like, do you feel though, because I, I have this feeling as well. I'm like, it's just, to me, it just seems very confusing. Yes. Like I, no one knows what's going on. Nothing is being said or addressed, and the shit that is being said or addressed, it's just a a, a media dick swing contest, it's a smoke show. You know, so it's a smoke all right, show. so you take that all out, you know, and then it's just like all right, no one else is saying anything, but there's still these major events happening every couple months around the world and all this other shit, uh, and. I just feel like everything's crumbling over here, right. <laughs> you know, so, very, very slowly from the inside because nothing is being, I just feel like nothing is properly organized I think and it's just one of the hot, to- uh, this is a hot take. I think we are, we are living through the decline of America. I think America's peak has come and gone. I think, I mean, to think that we, it's such a human arrogant thing to think that we are America and we won't have the same problems of Every single civilization that has ever existed on planet Earth. The culture we build and the society we build is is not a long sustaining. No, dude, all the China dynasty fell, Rome fell, yeah. freaking uh, the Russian Empire fell, the Soviet Union. Like civilizations do fall. Yeah, it happens, and I think what we're seeing now it's just not sustainable. Like I think we could be living through it, and I, I was talking to my wife about this, like. I think a lot of people live through things and they don't li- realize they're living through a huge moment of history until you look back. Like COVID, I didn't realize we were living through COVID. Like one day, I just freaking came into work and they're like, did you hear the news? I'm like, hear what? Like, uh, yeah, we might be getting sent home. I'm like, why? There's this COVID thing. Like yeah. people can't be around. You got to wear a mask. I'm like, what? Like, do you remember like the first time you heard about it? Yeah. I feel like it was like the beginning of a movie almost. I was, it like, was just like, wait, what's happening? Like... We get to go home today? Great. For what? I remember sitting because at work and, sick. and, and like, I heard about it through the cruise ships that they kept docked. And I was at work and just the unit I was working in just, you know, I had a radio in it. I was just listening to it. And just all day they're like talking about these cruise ships. I'm like, what the hell is this COVID-19? And they're holding these cruise ships and yeah. all this other shit. And then it felt like overnight some dumbass just decided to be like, nope, it's all... It's all out there. It's spreading across America. Someone let them all out and yeah. COVID's everywhere now. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then before you knew it, it felt like everything was a 
ghost town. I know. But my point is, like, we did. I didn't realize I was... It's going to be in the history books forever. Yeah. Just like the Spanish flu. Like, it was a thing. The COVID-19. But you didn't realize you were, like, living through it. And that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what if we're, what if we're living through the decline years of America and we just don't know it and then one day we're going to look back at the history books and like yeah that's when America used to exist now we're in the the United States of they keep whatever. talking about that fall that might happen like this could like we're no we're in it just riding it out yeah <laughs> so that I mean, list I brought up we're way down at the bottom <laughs> for what remember the longest empires oh really <laughs> yeah well America's like 160 I've also thought about that I think because of Modern technology. Do you notice how everything's fast now? Oh, yeah. Everything's fast. Everything's fast. Everything's at your fingertips. Everything's emails, authenticizing. Like, everything's quick about And now this. AI is going to make it faster. So, it would make sense that our economy would collapse faster than the rest. Mm -hmm. Because we just live a faster-paced life. Like, well, Romans might have taken 100, 200 years before they figured out central banking in Rome. Right? Whereas, like, mm -hmm. they figured out how to do that here in, like, 50 years. And do you think, like, I just feel like being a consumerist consumerism based <laughs> just culture man like Talks it just away. keeps growing it but it just culture? keeps growing like as soon as something comes out there's already an expectation that something else has to come out that's going to be better at some yeah. point right so here's a question at everything i agree do you guys think there's something better than capitalism no, listen capitalism is oh you're getting me going sean good job yeah. buddy I think capitalism is the most misunderstood thing there is out there because so many people look at capitalism like it's a thing. It is a description of what happens. It is, I have something, you want it, you're willing to give me money for that thing. But if somebody else has the same thing and they offer you it for a better price, you're going to go to them. That's capitalism, okay? That's all it is. Like, but capitalism is getting turned into this, and it's just like what happens with like the cancel culture and like the wokeness. Like, it's a thing now. Like, capitalism is terrible. It's ruining yeah. America. And I'm like, yes, there's a thing that's happening in America that is ruining America, but it's not capitalism. Capitalism is a description of an action, of like actions, I should say. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. it gets such a bad rap because there's nothing wrong with you having multiple people that offer a product and you finding the cheapest one. You know what I mean? That that's that's supply and demand. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Are you describing socialism there? Socialism would be the opposite of that. Right, but the barter system that you just kind of started with isn't that part of socialism? No, no, I think so, I, and Sean can look this up because I think socialism is there's only one price and one the government everything comes to the government and you get it all doled out like it's everything's equal. Mm -hmm. But if everything's equal, there's no incentive to do better. I think. And I think like you, but that's but that's but that's the issue. What's the issue? Always having to do better on something, I rather than just. I could see that, but don't you think? So like you're being a tattoo artist, yeah. Don't you think you should be able to charge a little bit more because your tattoos are better than somebody else who doesn't do tattoos as good of as good as you? If you value money, or you value the tattoo. Yeah, that doesn't mean like if I were to like. I don't value, like, I could charge a lot more for, like, what I do for my tattoos based off of what the market is currently right now. Right. I don't. I just, I know what it takes for this place to run because yeah. I need this place. I have to tattoo in a licensed, you know, facility. Right, right. Your, your fixed costs. So um, like I know what it costs and I know what my cost of living is after that. And But that's you personally being fair. Yeah. What I'm saying is I think that is really what capitalism's about. Is like if I want a better version of something, but I could see what you're saying, how it would lead to that constant need for betterment. Yeah. That constant need for But I, I'm a person, I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm a brand name buyer. Mm -hmm. I wanna buy I don't mind paying more for something that I really like if it's a higher quality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, that's that's why I like capitalism because I like that competition. I think if you don't have that competition or that incentive shit would get like bland you know like not bland but like um the quality of stuff would drop see you're talking about being fair as an individual you're yeah. a very good person like you're doing you could charge more but you're not well, yeah, and and that's the thing like there's a business side of things you know of course um but that's you being and, fair and that, that's that, more and your and that falls into i mean you know that's everyone values everything differently too True. you know like you know you could value 
sneakers and I could value hats, right? Right. Like you would spend four hundred dollars on a pair of sneakers. Right. I would spend four hundred dollars on a hat, but we would never do it on the other item. But I think that's capitalism. But, and it's you know, but we're, yeah. But you still need a hat. Yeah. And you yeah. might go out and buy a ten. I mean, what did you like? Hats or shoes? Hey. Oh, I don't hats. remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying like that's capitalism. Like yeah. you can go buy a cheap hat because you don't value that. Yeah. Whereas I would never. I want the nice hat. Yeah. But if there's only one hat and one price, we all get the same hats. I'd be like, what the fuck, man? I don't yeah. want his shitty hat. Like I want my own hat. So but I think then, capitalism has been around for a while, right? Even did again. I don't think it's that's something that's been around. I right, think it's well, a description. Either way. Either way. Can, can Do- you Google? The difference? Capitalism? No, no, just Google what is like the definition of capitalism. All right, all right, yeah, no, I have it. I'm sorry, I don't mean it. All right, so capitalism is based on individual initiative and favors market mechanisms over government's intervention, while socialism is based on government planning and limitations on private control of resources. So I feel like neither one of those is good because like you were saying, capitalism leads to greed. And then the 1% definitely, the money flows upward. But I also worked in government, as did you. And I don't think anything should be completely government controlled. Because they just find ways to fuck it up. Well, and, and no matter... There almost has to be like a middle ground. Well, there's you know al- there, I mean, there's always going to be a world with government. And what yeah. government is, is control. Yeah. That's all it is, is control. That's what even medieval The times. level of control and then how they decide to i guess fuck with its population right? you know Farm like honestly like honestly it's and i think it's money right it's, now it's 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 you know it's fucked up that we got to live that way in this world it's it's sad yeah. because like you said there's a lot of people who take advantage of that stuff and you are a good person so you don't i think i am as well i don't charge as much as i could charge in construction because i i try to just charge what's fair mm-hmm. but there's i feel like there's not a lot of people like us in business. Like I think okay. a lot of people, and I think it's like a, almost a human thing. Like if you could take it and you can get it, they're going to do it. I know. If you can overcharge and get away with it, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Yeah. That's the part that, that makes me sad about parts of humanity is just like there are, and I actually have said this before. I, I might've said this in the podcast. Like there's just good and bad people. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter what your job is. It doesn't matter where you are. There's going to be a handful of good people and there's going to be a handful of yeah. bad ones. Yeah. And and that's like an unfortunate truth. Like there's always going to be some bad people. Do you feel as though a lot of the bad people or evil people or bad things that happen in this world are a result of our own culture, society? Um Yes and Over no. Over long periods of time. Yes and no. I think like the mental health crisis that's happening right now, yeah. where all these like school shootings and mass shootings are happening, I think that is a product of of our shitty culture and shitty like mistakes we made as a society. Mm-hmm. But no, in the sense that I think that no matter what, I think there's just some bad people. Yeah. I think some people, I do believe a lot in balance. I do believe a lot in the yin and yang. You, all of humanity cannot be inherently pure and good that it would be an imbalance i don't think that will ever happen i think i think it's like a like a, like a scale like right so like if you have a hundred people the you're gonna have one person who's just pure evil and you're gonna have one person who's just pure good and then you're gonna have like and then you're gonna have a person in the middle who's kind of like half well, good half bad we'll take everything this society culture world has built and now picture the collapse of it right picture picture the collapse of it all and there is none of it anymore. What? And then you take, you know, the human species, whatever we are. What are we without all of that? Take all of that out of it. That's what I mean. I think some people. And, and you ever see the Book of Eli? It's one of my favorite freaking movies. Yes, that's with uh, Dan. Dan Zell. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. blind. Yeah. I think that there's going to be even in like a post-apocalyptic type world. I think there's going to be people, even though they're starving who would try to help other people and still be good people. And I think you're going to have people because of post-apocalyptic, oh my gosh, post-apocalyptic times are going to take advantage of the fact that there's no government, no police and like, and do bad things like rape and pillage and steal. Like, I think that's what I mean. I think no matter what the society is, you're going to have a balance of the type of people you got. 
And that's scary. I think it's just going to knock it back to a level playing field. You think so? Yeah. How well, so? I mean, if there is like a big, a, you know, it could happen. collapse or anything like that. It, I mean, you know, it's just going to go down. And you see the movies on how it portrays out with, yeah. you know, everyone gets in their communities and it's war against each other like on the, the walking land. Dead. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's just like, man, it, I, I don't think, I mean, would we ever get over having to have something like that? Or would the collapse mean, just, would people fall back into deeper spiritual spirituality? If I can uh, yeah, say yeah, I know, word. it's hard uh, to say the big words. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even say it two seconds ago. Or, you know, would it go back into the same... Cycle? Cycle. I think, I think if you look back at history, we already have the answer. I think if you look back at all the different cultures, mm -hmm. they all have different values. Like, I think the Native American, like, I don't, do you, we talk about this a lot, me and Sean, like science and stuff like that. Native Americans, I think, more than likely came over the, the ice bridge from, like, Russia, because they, they have that, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, the look to them, mm -hmm. like that, that, that Russian, Chinese, uh, like, a European look to them almost. And, uh, or Asian, not Asian. Anyways. So those people came over the ice region, and then they became isolated in North America, and they developed a very spiritual culture. Like, th that's the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people who were in Europe, they were developing at the same time different areas, different values came up for those. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think, it, it, I think that would happen. Like, if you're saying, like, what would we become? Yeah. Like, what would happen? I think you might see different communities arise. And you almost see it here in America with the different states. Mm -hmm. Like, every state kind of has its own... Culture like LA and California oh, has yeah, like that culture. Yeah. New York, based off of southern, based off of climate. Oh, I know. I mean, think of how you know the years of that climate has developed that culture based off of you know what grows there. Because yeah, you have to practice doing certain yeah. things because of the climate. Yeah, and what you have to do. Yeah, I feel like people in New York are like not harsh, but like we're like kind of gritty and tough because yeah. of how cold it gets up here. Oh yeah, you know what I mean, like. Like East Coast is kind of like direct to the point, whereas California, because it's always so nice, is like chill, it man. It shows too. People, pe people wear more natural layers, body layers, in, <laughs> in East Coast as opposed to West Coast. Yeah. So that was called the uh, Bering Strait. Bering. Bering, Bering Strait. Bering Strait. Strait. The land, yeah. the Bering Land Strait, or the, the Bering, land Bering Strait. Just the Bering Strait crossing. Bering Strait. Did you go to called. Northwood? I did. I well, went, to, went Northwood to Northwood and Clinton. You remember Mr. No, 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 it was, no, was it East Middle? Mr. Fazio? Mm -hmm. Remember I Fazio? Fazio. Yeah. I think he taught, I think I remember Social him studies, right? talking about that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why that crossed. The ice bridge? The, yeah. the land bridge? Yeah. Funny story, my old man had him as a teacher too. Really? Wow. Yeah. And that yeah. shows because wow. he rolled up my planner and smacked me in the head once. <laughs> <laughs> that just shows how different Yo, that teaching yeah. style Yo, what was. What do you think would happen if that happened now? He'd be fired, fired and instantly. arrested. Yeah, fired and probably arrested. You're right. Yeah, child oh. abuse. If, I guarantee you, if a teacher smacked a student over the head with a planner, that teacher would probably be taken out in handcuffs. Probably wow. not actually booked, but probably taken Yo, out. Yo, think in cuffs. about what that. Think about the difference. And we're not that old. Like we're only in our thirties. Thirty. Yeah. Think about the difference in culture since then. We still graduated in the 2000s, right? So, yeah, 2007. Yeah, and it's just a, f a different, like wow. a difference. What a difference! And that's only in what? So 2007, and now how long have we been out of school? Who's good at math? Seven, 15, 16, 23, 16 years. Yeah, 16. 16 years. Oh. Ouch! Yeah. I know. <laughs> our freaking 20 our years. 20 year reunions coming up. Oh my Me and Sean was at the 10 year baby. We were. That was yeah. a good time. That was a really good time. I, that was a lot of fun. You didn't, you didn't like it? No, I enjoyed it, but I was, uh, I still had my own demons then. So. Oh, yeah. I did, did you really? Yeah, what was that, 10 years ago? Me and oh, you were yeah. chilling. I didn't know yeah. that. 20, six, years ago. six years ago. Oh, six, six. years ago, yeah. Um, so tell me about this alien encounter, bro. You like dropped a little, like, you dropped like a little, uh, little breadcrumb, a little treat before you went to the bathroom. You're like, yo, you want to hear about aliens? <laughs> My first trip on DMT. Yeah, dude. Like, okay, so this is a big area of mine. And, and this is actually a big topic for the I love talking podcast. about this, by the way. There's like, because addiction seems to be 
a thing a lot of people struggled with Mm -hmm. opiates drugs in general and then i'm like because i'm getting old because i didn't do drugs when i was younger and now that i'm an adult and i just i'm curious Mm -hmm. like this stuff is very appealing to me so i i I, i'm hoping maybe an ayahuasca or dmt trip might be in my future but i don't dmt would probably be better just because of it's a shorter it's a eight to ten minute high or not it's not even a high it's a ten minute trip experience trip yeah um and the the awesome thing about dmt is it doesn't affect any of your motor skills or anything so when you smoke it when you're in that trip you don't feel like you do when you're high or drunk or Mm -hmm. you know on mushrooms or anything you are completely yourself which is kind of scary or now thinking about it just because of you know what you see and the type of I, i'm very thankful for you know for ted because he was able to help guide me through it and i feel like this is so important for something like this yeah he, i mean he, having a good setting and good guy we talked about it months before me even doing it and um first of all you know what it was used what it's used for yeah. and um i just finally came to a point where on this spiritual journey, you know, that I've been on that I just had a few questions and few ends I couldn't just tie together and I wanted to try it too, you know. A quick question before yeah. we get too far into this. Yeah. When you you say that your body, like you, it's not a body high, like you don't mm-hmm. get a high, so you don't feel anything. Do you have to close your eyes to have this, have like the visions or like, to, to, like for, what is the high? Like for, what is the for, trip? I'll get, yeah, I'll... I'll go right through the okay, first good, toke, okay, man. Okay, okay, good, good, <laughs> it's good. awesome. Because I'm like, um, I, I don't get it. Like so that. I get out to California to to visit Ted. This is a couple months ago, and I'm staying. Oh, out. so this is recent. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's a cool. This shit. is three, four months ago, maybe four wow, months ago. So it's fresh in here. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've been wanting to do it for about six months prior to that. So he was just telling me different meditation techniques and how to shift my awareness around and and stuff like that. So I get out there. And we plan for it. It's like the second, third last night I'm in California. And you need a sensory deprivated room. So we're in his back bedroom of his house. And, you know, there's no music. All the windows are closed. It's all good. And we first did a meditation practice of just learning or just focusing on shifting your awareness on small things, big things, multiple things, and and different, moving your awareness around. What do you mean? Um, like inside focus. your head, like you thinking about certain things. Yes, I don't, I don't know what you mean by shifting uh, your awareness. Like, like focus. Okay. Um, oh, smack the microphone. Yes, you did. You heard that one. Check one too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just you know just focusing on one thing and then you know looking at that, focusing on another, just just kind of looking around a little bit and just mainly trying to keep myself calm. Because I don't know what any of this is, mm-hmm. and I don't know what I'm gonna see. So, at this point, before it, you know, I've, I've smoked weed, I've done mushrooms, I haven't done really anything else besides that. Okay. No acid, no LSD, nothing. So I'm right uh, there with you, except for cocaine. Which uh, the only thing you feel with cocaine is like, I feel great. <laughs> like, literally, just wait, John. Just, yeah. Before your DMT trip, you never did any other hallucinogenics. No. Nothing. No. Not even shrooms. Mushrooms, yes. I, oh, I mi- well, I microdose mushrooms a few times, but never like full. So microdose, blown. but never really hallucinated. And I then think, you went straight into DMT. I feel like yeah. can we can we just like take a sec a second here to? I feel like that word microdose has been destroyed for oh. mushrooms because mushrooms are gaining so much popularity. Oh yeah. I don't like. Did you feel anything when you microdosed? The first time I did, yeah. Because the like, first time I did it, I actually ate like mushroom caps. Oh, okay. And but I don't think that's microdosing. The, well, the second time I did it, I, it was like a mushroom infused chocolate. Oh, okay. But the first time I did it, I was out in Hoyt Lake behind Albright Knox, had my little setup, oh, brought some nice. snacks, music, sketchbook. Nice. Yeah, microdose. Oh, but I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, birds chirping is that, and is that microdosing? Because my brother had gotten me like pills. Like yeah. somebody took mushrooms, ground them up, and yep. put them like into a pill. Take one pill, and it's that's what they call a microdose. Is one yeah, of those and I, pills. I don't feel 
almost not, I just I feel like energized. Like I feel like a I have a little heightened or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just everything. I feel relaxed and clarity. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like I've taken shrooms to where like I would I didn't I wouldn't say I took a whole bag, but I took them and I'm like, like the walls kind of like are wavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. Like pills, I would say, is the microdose, and that like I feel like what you did is like. A well, dose. you can get that same off of those pills. You just take two or three of them. Oh no shit! Yeah. That's why I felt a little weird when I took three. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Pop those like Flintstones vitamins. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. So, let me interrupt. All right, so you're so we're we're in the room, and he's guiding me through a, on how you have to smoke DMT because there's a couple like two different phases of it. So we have it, I have it in a cartridge, a pen form. He has it. So he goes, what you're going to do is you're going to take one big hit and exhale. Take a second big hit and exhale. And on the third one, you're going to take in as much as you can off of that pen. And as soon as your lungs are filled up, pull your blindfold down, lay back. And when you're laid back, sl- breathe out that last hit yeah. and enjoy. Off you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, so... First of all, the fucker, Ted, we were supposed to do it the night before, and I'm hitting this thing, hitting it, hitting it. I'm not getting anything. It, the thing was dead. There was no oh charge to gosh. it. Oh, my Yeah, so I hit this what thing ex- like, expecting. Oh. Yeah. So thanks, Ted. Yeah, that so, had to be a little, give me was, a little anxiety. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. Well, it ended up working out well. We ended up doing it the next night, which yeah. was, who cares? Yeah, you know, right, right. I was fine with. So I'm sitting on the bed. I take the first big hit, and this shit tastes like straight chemicals like Ooh. chlorine and it's just, it's, it doesn't taste good so i take the first big hit and I'm, i take a monster hit the first one and i breathe it out and already i'm i feel it like in my by my temples oh no shit and my eyes start to like stimulate almost yeah. so i take a second big hit a mo- another mo- second monster hit breathe that one out and i'm like whew, i'm starting to get a little sweaty because yeah. the room is starting to like dot up that like turn into like fast. little dots oh yeah holy shit so then the third one man i ripped this thing like i've never ripped <laughs> anything in my life i probably i probably smoked <laughs> way too much of this but and that third hit put the bl- uh, blindfold down and as soon as i laid back I-, I breathed out and it was in full blown mode right away so as soon as you close your eyes you know when you see that whole black field Terrence McKenna, who's who's a, a guy that talks a lot about DMT, um, he calls it the chrysanthemum that starts to open up. And it's this beautiful mandala, colorful, three-dimensional flower that starts like right in the middle, and it just opens up, and it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it takes over your entire peripheral inside your eyes, like everywhere. It's It's not 4K, man. It's like you're in 10K. So like you're in like a like a chrysanthemum. This how do you say it? Chrysanthemum? 3D chrysanthemum it's, and it's mandala. Like, and you, if anywhere you like, can you like look it's, around? It's everywhere and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking before the trip, I'd be able to like really look around, but you you're just so mesmerized. And the craziest thing that I first started experiencing was, um, my mind, like me seeing this stuff, I was okay yeah um my body was not so it started to get very sweaty i felt like my body felt like it wanted to crawl out of its own skin because it's never experienced anything like this before wait wait so you you could like you could feel your body and your mind being separate that's the shifting awareness part that i i yeah i just really put that together maybe a couple months ago that that's what ted was kind of talking about i was just talking to i don't and mind, I, and body, so, spirit. Mind, yeah. body, spirit, man. So, I, you know, seeing this chrysanthemum and just, you know, my feet, I knew I was moving my feet around like this and I was moving. Your body feels very uncomfortable because it's never experienced anything like this before. But as long as you can keep your, your awareness and just focusing on this beautiful thing happening in front of you, you know that it's just your body can experience whatever it wants to. And so can your mind. Oh, my God. Um. So, so cool. this, and there was some subtle sounds in it. Like there was this high pitched noise in the background, but it wasn't annoying or anything. And then there was this subtle, like a, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
um, almost like that Tibetan healing music sort really? of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, but it was very vibration. But it was very, very subtle. And after a couple minutes of this, it wasn't long, maybe under a minute of this chrysanthemum, uh, is when I smoked enough to propel through, <laughs> which I was literally projected in towards this white orb light that like shot me forward. And then I was in this room. Do you remember like when you were a kid that Plato kinetic sand? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. My kids have it now. (laughs) So picture a whole room that's made out of that material, but in in like a burgundy dark red color. Really? Yeah. The whole room was made out of that material. None of the corners of the wall were like sharp. We were all rounded. So what, can I ask what happened to your body? Like what, what, like, it's like Mm -hmm. since your mind did that mm-hmm. did you forget about like your uncle like no i just you still can have like a, a sense of the physical and a sense of the so i sensing? knew my body was just laying there in a bed my physical the the so. the being of john yeah was laying there on the bed um when i was propelled into this room it felt like my i, I it, it call it a source of energy it yeah. felt like i was just standing in the front of this room um just overlooking not standing but just like kind of being there yeah yeah, yeah. and towards the back of the room there was these cubbies kind of carved out into the back and wall same same material i'm just kind of looking at them like kind of a cool room yeah don't know where the fuck i am but yeah. like all right and then in a couple seconds i noticed there were these entities floating towards me i didn't know what they were they they were in the shape of cubes and made out of the same material and they were dark teal and black in color and there was a three of them to the right and one of them to the left and as the three came up and they were just floating towards me real slow and i was just like hmm, what are these you know and <laughs> as they came up to me the ones to the right just like absorbed into my stomach they just boop and the one to the left was like checking, like he got really close to my face, like up in here. And I'm just like, okay, just letting him check me out. And he's just floating there. And then he just ended up going into my stomach. And really? After they went into my stomach, I felt I was being laid on my back, kind of just like looking upwards. And I looked down towards where my feet would be. There was no feet. And I would just see way in the distance this like white kind of orb way, way out there. This was the craziest sensation I felt out of the whole trip was that those things that went into my stomach, it felt like they were kind of like pushing up on my stomach and just coming back in. Like my stomach was made of bread dough and it was just blue. And I was just like, oh, that feels really weird. You know, I'm like, Yo. all right, I'm just whatever they're doing. And all I remember is in my mind, just telling them, thank you. I was thanking them. Really? Yeah. You didn't have any fear or any of this? No. Cause I'm not going to lie. Even right now listening, just as like things floating towards me, I feel like inherently I would have like a little bit of just like, Whoa, like even if, that instinctive reactive fear. If I didn't have like Ted co- like coaching me and telling Sound me all about setting, this, man. I would have, I would have freaked out probably during the chrysanthemum phrase. Just, just phase, just by on how my body was feeling. He stayed in the room the whole time. Yep, he was in the corner, just sitting there silently, you know, oh, just watching shit. me. Yep. Was, and he, he, on a, was he on it too? No, or he was. So nope. he was. But he had his blindfold on, so he, even just like knowing that he was there, probably. Like oh, even I felt in the back of your head knowing that he was somebody was there. I know at any because you know he told me like you know you're not going to feel high, you're not going to lose function of your body or anything. I knew at any time I could call for him. And he, I just, I felt comfortable and I knew that if I needed to come out of this trip, I was going to come out of it safely and he knew what was going to happen. That reassurance has to be a watch. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's um, the difference. Do you remember doing drugs as a kid? Like I remember smoking pot. Like you could have a bad high. Yeah. I feel that's the, I've had some bad trips in my day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably just a sense of insecurity. Yeah. You want to be somewhere safe. Like I never understood people that tripped and went to like. A major party with like fifty yeah. people. I did like, that. I did. I, yeah. I took shrooms and went to the Shack concert. The Shack concert. <laughs> Stupid as fuck. <laughs> that was really bad. 
First of all, who goes to a Shaq concert not on shrooms? <laughs> True. Well, I, I heard that I should have done shrooms. I should have done like Molly or something. I should have yeah. done like a like a ecstasy yeah. or something, ecstasy ecstasy or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that gives you more of like those the feel good. Drug. Yeah, yeah, like like the endorphins, right? Yeah, like, it's like you want to hump everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, I'm John. sure that would wanting to hump everything kind of goes along with like techno music because you're just like. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. See, I thought it was boots and cats and boots and cats. I thought it was cats. I thought it was boots and cats this whole time too. Is it boots and pants? Boots and pants. Is it? I think that makes more sense. That's two articles of clothing. I feel like that's two different versions of techno music right there. I mean, I'm sure you can do it. Boots and cats. Yeah. Pants. Cats and dogs. All right. So when you experienced the cubes, did you? Not no, you. Like, <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> the Bruce Pants thing. Um, when you experienced the cubes, now did you feel like you were in our same universe? Like, did you? Because the way that you explained it, and watching you, like I'm literally seeing you on the video, you explained it like you let this thing, like how would I, I would experience a dog that's like checking me out, like licking my face, sniffing mm-hmm. me. I give yeah. it my hand. So you saw that as like a separate entity, like mm-hmm. a living creature, this cube. A, a different living entity. When you say, is this what you meant by like aliens? you think those were aliens? Not, a, uh, not aliens, just they were another energy source. Because I have a you bunch know, of questions uh, already. I, I love this. this so is- like and I, I would probably, my experience of it almost put in like uh, another time parallel, you know, um, my energy source was in a different time parallel and they were checking me out. Um, what happened after was pretty wild too. After, continue, when I, when I see, when story. I seen that globe, yeah, keep, when keep, I seen continue. that orb, yeah, yeah. like way in the distance, um, from there that I seen that glowing orb and then it felt like I was being ascended upwards. And as soon as I felt like I looked up was this, absolutely beautiful gorgeous white bright white and gold three-dimensional mandala pattern in the sky and it was so bright and there was i I remember seeing this apex kind of like hole like right in the middle of it and as i was being ascended upward towards this thing it was the energy was getting so powerful from it and it not from speed of being shot up at it it wasn't the speed that it was just like whatever energy this source was radiating was just so powerful that as I was getting closer, I, I couldn't take it. When you say energy, like, can you tell me what kind of energy? Like, um, like, you know, when you're when you have a bonfire and you can yeah. feel the radiant heat, you can't like that kind of energy or like, is it like a, like a, like a buzzing energy. Have you ever been, like have you ever been close to like when a firework goes off and you feel that? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. It's, like that? Yes, but and then picture that and like heat without like the power heat. of heat without heat. Yeah, um, I do know what you mean. I do know what you mean. And it was and it like it was very bright and it was just as I was ascending towards this thing, I I, I was just like, oh my god, this is so strong. And that was coming towards the end of my trip. As I was getting towards this thing, all I remember I was laying back there. I'm like, Ted, can you come hold my hand? And he's like, Yep, I'll be right there. And I've slowly walked over he like sat on the edge of the bed and he he grabbed my hand like this and as soon as i felt him grab my hand i just i instantly knew i was comfortable to bring up the blindfold and when i brought up the blindfold if you ever like movies i I don't know if it was like the movie jumper or the matrix when the room comes together and like fractals very yeah 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 it the room i watched the room come together in like shards of glass in the course of like a second and a half. And it went, Dee! I was like, <gasps> it sounds like you transport. It sounds like you transport. <laughs> my eyes were like, I remember looking at Ted and he had my hand. He's like, you're okay. You're, you're okay. You're safe. I'm like, I know that was just, he goes, it intense. was a lot. He goes, it was intense coming back. Wasn't it? I'm like, I just need a minute. He's like, okay. Dude, that last part sounds like you transported back. It, does it, it not? Does it, it not it sound was, like he transported back? And then he, as he takes out the things, it's like he just got back and like the like reality's piecing itself back together. The, the, the whole thing, you know, I I thought I understood it 
I understood it a little bit. You know, we tended like after once I came down and like went outside, like smoked the blunt, like yeah. calm myself down a little Gotta bit. Get that yeah, weed, yeah, maybe put yeah. you back on earth. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, it was great because every day I was in California, Ted, we would have like our tea time. We'd go outside and just just drink tea for you know an hour or two hours and just have our long, deep, deep discussions. And that DMT one um, set me on a path of just. Comfortable about a lot of things in life, uncomfortable about other, you know, different, you know, like death. Really? I, I have become extremely comfortable with death eventually, you know, after experiencing that of like what afterlife is. Why? You know, we all have our own beliefs and, you know, everyone can believe what they want to. And um, after experiencing what I did, I I feel this, as though in my afterlife that once I go... um my energy source, which is that orb of just energy will be moved to another place dimension. And I might come back as a kinetic sand cube, like that world I was in. It might be there, you know, um, it might be, it That's could so be cool. a trillion other time fractals in this. In I'm, this. I'm just having a, um, a thought while you're saying this, what if other beings do DMT and then they come to our world, and then we see them as ghosts. Crazy, right? And that's why there's so many different horror stories of like werewolves and vampires and white ghosts and this thing and that thing, well, orbs so, of light. Like, so what if it's just like all these different fucking so, universes? So, so DMT is naturally produced in your body. Yes, I, I did. Right, I, your I, pineal gland. Jo so I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, and he's he's a he talks about this. I I, I mean, we, I had questions because of what he said and what you said. That you know, play and you know, you can smoke DMT a hundred times, man. You're probably gonna have a hundred different experiences. You'll go to a hundred different places, you know. Uh, I've heard stories of people, you know, very clear headed, expecting to go into a trip um, to find certain answers and they experience the chrysanthemum. And when they are propelled through, they are met face to face with like three gnarly demons, like in your face, like immediately. Um, you have to be ready for that too. You just, you don't know. Well, you know what this but is making me think of? You know, do you remember when we had first Omegle computers? Oh yeah, yeah. We taught your daughter. Um, what if it's like? What if it's like the universe is Omegle, and then like the loading screen is the chrysanthemum, and then you just end up in like you're going to this universe, and then you're like, oh my god, this one's crazy. Yeah. Like, and then you're like, oh my gosh, this one's beautiful. Like, and it's just like Russian roulette of of. Different, you like this DMT trip takes you to this universe this time. Yeah, like, and and that was and you know and that kind of makes sense. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're good. I've heard that there's different versions of DMT. Yes, so you have. I mean, I only know of two. There's DMT and oh, I'm MEOA gonna, or something. I'm gonna fuck this up. Five MEO, five OMEI. Five, I, I think it's five MEO. I just so Ted and I were just talking about. I, I'm saying. Hi, Ted. I'm saying a lot, referencing you a lot tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, You're famous. <laughs> well, and there's, you know, another, a lot of philosophers or whatever I listen to, you know, through Ted. And um, there's one that I've recently listened to through him. Uh, I did a commission drawing of him for Ted. And he says this line in one of his talks. He goes, oh, I did this thing because my guru told me to, told me to. You know, that's why, that's the only reason why he didn't. And it led him to this, you know, path of enlightenment. And yeah, I was like, man, it really resonated with me. I was like, well, I, I do a lot of things in my life now based off around just what he would tell me to do yeah. or, you know, and well, somebody like, look up to it's somebody who's had life experiences that's yeah. passing those life experiences yeah. down to you. Mm -hmm. So then you like inherently like, okay, so yeah, like, I trust you. I, so I just like, oh, why'd you do this? I just do it because Ted told me to. <laughs> Ted's a good name too. Like, <laughs> like Ted talks. Like Ted told me to. Yeah. I need a Ted in my life. You need a Ted in your life. Yeah. Ted you Hawkins. Guru. Everybody no, no, needs a I little think, you. I think what, their I, life. If I'm, and tell me if I'm wrong. I, he's your role model. He is a mentor. Is. I think everybody needs a role model. And it's and it's not just because of you and know a role the, model is in all different aspects. And of it's life. not just because of the good someone provides. Right. It's knowing that someone can be a very transparent 
and it's taught me to be transparent. And it's the only way, you know, wisdom is achieved and, you know, amongst other things. Um, he's, he's taught me a, a lot of things. And know? I feel like, uh, I feel like I can, I can go on and on, but yeah, I, I feel like certain people are role models for certain parts of your life because I would never expect my dad to be my role model for this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But my dad's very much my role model. Like he's taught me how to be a good person, a good dude, right? Like, is your dad one of your role models? Like, yeah. Like, but he would never have like talked to you about this kind of stuff. Like you almost no, have to have no, a different yeah, role yeah, model. Yeah. To take you down some of these paths. Well, and, and that's, I mean, you got to think too with our age, you know, with generation gaps and stuff like that too. Um, you know, our parents were, ra- our our grandparents were raised different. Our parents were raised different. 100%, yeah. You know, I think our parents and us were raised somewhat similar, you know, as far yeah. as time frames of, you know, when change and stuff was happening. But, you know, you see the shift nowadays. Huge. Well, like I, like I was saying earlier about capitalism, socialism, why the downfall of America, I think, is going to be faster than other civilizations because we move faster. Like, we as a society are moving faster than any human society ever has before. We are relying because we have the internet. We are relying on a computer now to think faster than we ever can right. about anything. Everything's just inherently moving faster as technology progresses. Like, but so, why do we need that? Dude, you're preaching to the choir. I live on a farm, man. <laughs> and that's I keep on pulling my hand back because you yelled at me earlier. So, if it's on camera, then I'm like, there's not a, like a thing here. I'm just like we, I remember that I'm in the. We learn how to crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. Man. <laughs> like you, all the fun that you're having over there, we're having just as much fun. Oh, really? Like, yeah. it, is, it really <laughs> is fun on this side. If so. you sure. edit this and you see me doing this a bunch of times, because it's like I'll be sitting there listening to him talk, and then I'll remember you. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I'm like, get my hand on the screen. Don't worry, you can put your hand back up. Yeah, there. right. Um, just uh, just hold hands like you were supposed to. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Uh, mm. Your hands are soft, bro. That's Thank nice. You. Like that. <laughs> so awesome. You, you, if you were there for Mark's, uh, Mark Mez's podcast, you'd have been freaked out. <laughs> I must have told that dude I loved him like eighteen times. I have to listen to it still. Remember? No, I know, I know. And you have to watch it. I have to watch it. It's, it's, it's fun. It. It's, it's fun. Reminds me of like Goodfellas, like your hand. Like, oh, what do you do for work? Construction. You don't feel like construction. <laughs> I'm a union delegate. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying about medical advancements. Yes. Why AI, computer, and, faster, faster, and faster. it's, you know, I feel like we're creating AI for these advancements for issues that we've already, that we have created yeah. to begin with, you know, cancers and you know, all these diseases and stuff like that that have just curated over the so much time years, that now years. we are forced to react. And instead of, you know, nipping it at the root, you know, let's cut down on the things that cause cancers and blah, blah, blah. But no, because why would we when it's cheaper to produce mm-hmm. and more readily available? But And that's the thing. It's this consumerism base that feeds into this need for these medical advancements on problems that we've created from the beginning. You, you, like I said, you're preaching to the choir because when I shower, I don't use any products. I just get in the shower and I just rinse off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've smelly. noticed. Shut up. I knew he was going to say that because I always ask him, do I smell bad? You know I got to like, candle it when you walked in here, Steve. <laughs> well, no. I mean, and, it, and, and no, but my, I'm like, I'm, I'm No, I know. I, and and I, I try to eat off of my own lamb. Like I mm-hmm. hunt, I grow stuff, and I, you know, chickens, eggs, all that. Like I'm trying to live a more natural life. But think of how hard it is to do that now. That was my point. Like that's, it's so They're hard. They're making it hard. Well, no, not not only are they making it hard to do that, because like the society we live in, yeah. it's hard in general. Oh, like, it is. It's, just it's maintaining hard. all the animals, not worrying about how I smell when I go out among public because I just rinse off with water and like, but I know that's healthier because I don't want to put chemicals on me. Like it's very Wait, hard. So you're also doing a farm. <laughs> Ki- I do a lot. Contracting company, right? Yep. Kids. Yep. Four. Two, yep. a set of twins. Yep. And a podcast. I'm a doer. We've discussed this. This is this was the story of one person taking one picture and one person taking a thousand. <laughs> I'm taking like a million pictures. <laughs> I just... I like to do. I, I don't. I don't watch a lot of TV, man. I just like you. Like all the things we're talking Which about, is good. Yeah, all the things we're talking about. I, I want to be present for every minute. Like yeah. that's why your DMT trip um, excites me so much because 
it, that's like where my mind's going is like there's more to life there's it really it, set things in some perspective on truly how small we are yeah and like it just we, we have such a little time here like i want to enjoy every freaking second of it and, it, it, and i'm not just like really this is what we're making a big deal of i life? know <laughs> I know. Like seriously, I like know. we're we're not the only species nope. in this universe, guy. Like it's and- a human condition. We are very self-centered. We are very we we forget our history. We don't think about the future. We're very like small-minded. And it really makes me question the control in 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 our planet. You know, and and, and our and that's what it, like, you know, going through this DMT experience like it just it, it really sets things in perspective of like, man, we are like our planet is a grain of salt in just in the universe, bro. In, in the universe. I and know. I'm like, man, now you're we, entering me and Sean conversation realms. And man, I'm like, is- stop fucking shit up in this world. Like, it could be really fucking easy and good, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're it's just and we're it's just, it. just getting destroyed. Isn't it funny? Just how, getting destroyed. Isn't it funny how thinking about how small we are in the big picture makes us realize how important it is to. Be good in this moment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like such a big thing, or I'm sorry, such a such a small thing makes you think about such big things. It's such a uh, it's such like a uh, a mind fuck, you know. It is, and so you try not to th- like. You know, I try not to think back of like, man, I wish I wouldn't have wasted all those fucking years like but doing dude, this or that. But I'm like, well, no, that's it's part of the journey. This I have this. Okay, do you have this? Someone's on the other end on a video controller controlling me. And just, right. Do you, do you guys think about this on a no. daily basis? <laughs> I hopefully do, he's got the cheat codes. Wait, no. <laughs> left, left, up, right. R1, R1, L2. I want to be rich. Hey, guy, figure out how to cheat. I want to be rich. God damn it. Give me that money cheat code. Do, do, you guys, do you guys have this problem? I, I This happens to me almost on a daily basis where I, I think about that kind of philosophical, philosophical shit. And then I also have to remind myself I have to be a realist because I have to go to work and pay bills. Like yeah. The reality is... You still got to... I still got to eat i still gotta work out i still gotta go to work i still gotta pay the bills i still gotta worry about my future i still gotta worry about my kids but then i'm like philosophically thinking like my life is a fart in the wind my life is a blink of an eye not even so much faster than a blink of an eye in comparison to the universe and the earth like it's but it's it's like those are they're two completely different Thought paths. It's so hard. Like literally on a daily basis, I had this struggle in my head. Think of how much we're being controlled on a daily basis. Oh, that depresses me. And and and, and like I said, I'm not saying there should be no fucking control. No, like, all right, I get it. You know, we we are a certain species that I guess are too fucking rowdy, and we need some good, you know, yeah, yeah. to well, be to well, be wrangled in a little good, bit. Good and bad people. There has yeah. to be regulation. There has to be yeah. balance. Yeah. I um. Mean, yeah. But you know. I you think of how our government is controlled on every level of our life, on our work day, and how, you know how much we have to abide by certain jobs in order to you know pay bills oh. in this structure that we have created. It makes me so sad when there's other universe, you know, other planets yeah, know. out there that so much more. Who know, one who knows what they look like, who knows what they survive on, who knows what their language is, and there's. If there's probably no and currency, if there's any even techno or what it, there's what an infinite there like, number of I worlds know, out there, you know? know. And we're worried about paying bills yeah. and controlling each other. Yeah. And like, I have more money than you. And like, it's like this whole thing. I and- hope on the next, my next round, I, I pray, I pray to whatever Ooh, the great, source spirit. Great segue, religion. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause it's not, I don't believe. I respect that people believe in God. I was raised Christian for a number of years. I don't believe there is a God. There is a source, a higher okay. power, a higher energy, yep. you know, um, but the actual, you know, human construction uh, of, you know, a, was there a Jesus? Yes, there was a Jesus, yeah, you know. Sure um, do I believe he did everything he did? I believe that's fucking impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. you know, um, but that's just me. I was raised that, you know, raised catholic and stuff like that and you know you could be catholic and believe it all and we could have amazing conversations and respect each other's religion and what, i want so to know what more you, what do you know? classify yourself like what do you what would you call yourself fuck have you i mean have you put thought into it because there's, no this is I something that i'm has trying to let go of that yeah that aspect of um definition or 
bro, you are just hitting all the nails in the head. You know, I like, do I follow, like I follow some Buddhism practice practices, yep. you know, um, so, I have a respect for all religion, no matter what you can believe oh. in. You can believe in for fucking Barney's you're, you're your god, join, and you're gonna go there after. You're gonna want to join good me for you. religion. Yeah. So one. Yo, can we get that shit tax free? Yeah, we yeah, get enough people, right? I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we could qualify for some some tax breaks. So this will segue into our cult castles. <laughs> our what? Cult castles. That's what I call churches. Oh, I cult ca- castles. Cult castles. It's That's, it's kind of a true. So I'm agnostic. Which means okay. what it's it's exactly what you said. I think that there's a higher power that I will never understand, but I respect because if it wanted to, it could go and I'm done. Right? I know it has to be because life is too beautiful and complex. There has to be something bigger. But I don't want to put a label on it. But we're limited to think. Think about it in the mass majority in, in our country, we are raised to think. I mean I, I was raised Catholic. The big, All you yeah. guys raised Catholic. Christian, you know? I was Christian. And, and God, I mean, think of how much it's put into our government, God yep. itself, and yep. stuff like that. I'm like, well, fuck, man, this is the biggest cult I've ever seen yep. in my life. And I'm like, yeah, it's on our dollar bill. In yeah, God we trust. God we trust. Yeah, and I'm like, who is saying that this 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 God is this one all be all? Uh, so this is Sean. Or the story me, that goes along with it too. Sean taught me this. Is I was gonna he, say, give me the props, bro. You, you can you can explain. Give me, all right, explain all right, error. Hold on. Hold on. Explain We're getting comfy. Error. I'm kicking my sneakers. Go ahead, bro. Right. Right. Explain to us air. And me and Sean got to this point. We got to the same religion, but by different by by two different ways. Like I wanted to eliminate all religions. Okay. Because I think the labels of religions is the problem. Because they all kind of have a higher power belief, and then Sean's version. Um, yeah, so <laughs> sorry, I'm still you know doing this and and listening don't to the conversation. Good, man. A little bit of a disconnect, but um, yeah. So my religious belief, I'm very much agnostic, born Christian, and I do believe in a higher consciousness. That's what I call it. We mm-hmm. have consciousness. Why wouldn't there be a higher consciousness? Or what is the point of this? You know, yep. why are yep. we why are we here rather than just rocks or water or soil like these unconscious things? You know what I mean? So. We have consciousness. I think there's something there. Now, if you break down the walls and you don't have this religion and this rules and this religion and this this rules. So if you put them all together, what I came up with is all inclusive religion. You take all of them. You take all the good points. So all inclusive religion, acronym AIR. We all need air. We all need you air. Have a That's bubble. my favorite part. You have a bubble. That's our bubble is everybody included. This all-inclusive religion where you take Buddhism, you take Hinduism, or Hinduism, Hinduism yeah. you take um, the Sikhs and their beliefs, you take everybody's, mm-hmm. take the good things out of it because that's what we should be focusing on rather than let me, you know... The dividing factors of the religion. Yeah, let me believe in this and because if you don't believe in this, then you're going to hell. Yeah. That's not what I think religion should focus on. So you take them all, take the good parts, put them together, and you get air. And that's... That came to me. I don't. I don't. I don't remember when Doesn't that, that came to me. But I just love the fact that all humans need air, and they that's do. what the acronym stands for. Yeah. But see, I got to there by saying we need to abolish all the religions. See, his was bring it all together. Mine was get rid of. But it's the same point: same is that point. we believe in a higher power, and that we should all just love each other, respect each other, that's be all, good. The L word, man. Love. That's all it is. I know. I. Th- and that's from creepy. from from what we can describe that sensation of what we are down to a core a whole a source it all comes down to that feeling of what we describe as love yeah want to take care of it's all it is and then everything else on everything else in front of that is just smoke and mirrors yep that and that's why i'm agnostic i don't like the labels because the labels i think is what makes us fight because if i'm christian and that person's a muslim and his god's named allah and my name's my god's is god well, yours is wrong. Mine's right. And he'll say the same thing to me. Yours is wrong. Mine's right. And that's where the division, that's where the hate comes from. Listen, I do have one big pet peeve to kind of pick with the Catholic religion about their story of Adam and Eve. Um, listen, have you ever seen how they depict Adam and Eve? They're hot as fuck. It's not how they look. Well, sort yes, it is. How, it, it, it's a physical attribute about them. They are naked. Yeah. <laughs> they are naked. They're the first two human beings. Are they have but that's my problem. They are the first two human beings, supposedly, by this story. Yeah. Say it. 
Are you going to say what I think you're going to say? I mean, they look pretty trimmed up. You think they'd be all hairy as shit? Yeah, don't you think they'd be portrayed as like hairy oh. motherfuckers? I thought you were going to say how like they're portrayed with belly buttons, but which umbilical cord did they cut? Oh. I mean, it's... A- I think I think Sean? it's it's like obvious. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think about that. That's it's like why a chicken it's fake. And the egg. It's fake. Well, it, yeah. It's 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 kind of bullshit. Do you think our world is our, our world is going to hit a point one day that it's going to be like <laughs> <laughs> like us growing up with like Santa Claus finding out he's fake. Like, like one day it's like, just gonna come out like, all right, we just can't control this shit anymore. <laughs> like we get it. Like just I, believe in whatever I, you want to yeah, believe in. Dude, like, I think I think when like all this alien talk that's yeah. been happening lately. Yeah. Like when they have a legit alien like on the news, like or or like where people can see it. <laughs> Here's Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think that will be the point. Like because that shatters all the preconceived yeah. notions of religion. Like yeah. if there's multiple universes, multiple aliens, and like and that's what and I feel like here is like, yo, listen, you guys ain't the only ones in the universe, idiots. Like there's like a million other races out there. And that's what, what I feel races? like races. Yeah. What do they call uh, uh, civilization? Species. 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 There's like a billion other species out there. I'm gonna refer to the Book of Eli. Okay, do you remember the movie, The Book of Eli? It's been I haven't watched it. You didn't see it? Did no, anybody I, I, see it recently? Oh yeah. So mm-hmm. the oh. one of the one of the main bad Great characters movie. in there. Mm-hmm. So the the premise of the book is um, I, I don't know Denzel Washington's character's names, but whatever. He has a Bible. Okay. <laughs> it's Eli. Eli is it Eli? No. <laughs> yeah, it's the Book of Eli. His oh, name is Eli. <laughs> I thought that the Book of Eli was in the Bible, like it was actually a Book of Eli. No, no, no. His name's Eli. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's the Book of Eli. Actually, that was stupid. <laughs> That was dumb. So Eli, he's blind, right? But you don't know that he's blind until the end of the movie. And he has a Bible, and it's in Braille, right? So only he can read it. The 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 like the main character bad guy doesn't know that he's blind, but he knows that he has a Bible, and he's like, "We need to get that Bible because mm. all the Bibles were burned in that movie." So he's like. And then you realize, he's like, we need that Bible. With that Bible, I can control everybody. I can bring um, order to this chaos because that's what religion is. It's a way to keep people in line and control them. That's why they've always had religion. And now with the internet, we're all like being, we're all becoming like privy to all this information. And, and we're like, why do we have religion again? We're, like, we're, ba- we're basing our entire... We're learning shit. What we are spending, I spent a majority of my life on this planet thinking that, you know, the afterlife was a certain way I had to do these certain things and I can't do these certain things and all by this book book that man wrote that men book wrote. of stories that a man wrote. Yeah. And if I know anything about men, it's not they true. Fuck shit. Up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they ruined. You things. know that motherfucker didn't turn H two O into wine. <laughs> like, because that would have been written in history on how that was done. No, no, Jesus because was it was alien. still being Jesus done to this an alien, day. And he had like iced tea mix that nobody knew about back then. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna turn this water into wine," but it's like it's like wine dust, and he's like. <laughs> Wine pouches on the go. It's like wine Mio. I got fermented Mio. <laughs> He's just got like this powder in his back pocket. Nobody sees him doing that. She's like, and ta-da, wine. I call it the Jesus teeny. Jesus teeny. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if Jesus was an alien and he had like anti-gravity tech? So he's like walking on water. And then he dies, but then he comes back to life because he's really an alien. And he didn't actually die; he just stopped his body. Like his, like, I'm just saying, <laughs> he totally could be an alien. Bro. It's what probably Jesus, not. It's probably not. What if Jesus was an alien and they just well, caught him or and persecuted just, him? Or he just had tech that others weren't aware of. Oh. Just tech, it's just technology, like floaty shoes, dude. And you want to get crazy? You want to get? You want to get deep? The mob, the masses, like when they. Think a thought. Like, it's happening now. It's like cancel culture and the wokeness. Mm -hmm. Like, when they decide something, like, when the masses decide something, that's what they all believe in. So, it's like, they decided Jesus was a bad person, and that's why they, like, get, like, the Romans got him and put him on the cross. Put it on the TikTok nowadays. (laughs) (laughs) How did religion get ruined? Oh, it was TikTok. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, even the Romans, what, uh, I forget his name, but didn't he wash his hands? 
of um, Jesus's death. Like he wanted nothing to do with it. Who? The like supervisor of that area at the time. That's a weird way to say it. Marcus Aurelius, like the leader no, of the no, Romans. No, no, like the Roman. Oh, man, all right, hold on. I got Google. <laughs> the supervisor yeah, we, of we that got, area. We, we, Sean, <laughs> this is not a job somebody had no, back so there in the Roman times. Listen, he was shift manager before. All right, he got promoted. <laughs> he got a promotion, and he's like, "Fuck, I got to deal with this." He Jesus was making. Thing? He was making it. Damn it! He was making an extra like three shillings a week or whatever <laughs> yeah. it was at back then. Yeah, yeah Pontius Pilate. Pa- well, Yo. Exactly. Wash his hands of the whole situation. Want to funny story? Nothing to do with Jesus. Want to know a funny story about Pontius Pilate? I would love to hear it. Punch, I, Pontius. So I was believe this or not about me. I was an altar server for twelve years in my life. My okay. mother was my religion teacher. Whoa. I played Pontius Pilate in a freaking like religion Did you really? play. Yeah, Did you wash yeah. your hands? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Did it, Did I, it can't I can barely remember our lines back then. <laughs> I washed my feet. That's what I did. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean like wash his hands? Like he just. You, you're so nice. symbolically, he I've just, seen it in a play where he symbolically like washes his hands of it. So he believed enough in Jesus to the point that he didn't want to be tied exactly to his death. So he was like the supervisor of the area. Yeah. And he formally washed his hands of the event, but then left it to the guards and no, left it to the Jews to do what they wanted to do, which is yes. And they did that to him? And they did it. The Jews, not the Romans, the Jews. Yeah. Really? Jesus. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so crazy. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I like. I do appreciate religion because it's almost like a history lesson. Like I do like learning about. It's like such. It's so well documented because it's religion, you know, of those times, mm-hmm. and just all religion in general. Like they documented so many things because it was so important to them. Like all the stories that go along with it and all the details. Do you think they inflated shit like we did? Like yeah, we do. Yeah, inflation. No, like I don't know, doctor stories. I, you ever play like the game softball? You ever play the game that's softball? What, and that's what I'm talking about. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of our we, and this is another Sean thing. Like ancient civiliza- civilizations, I don't think we have the slightest clue about the shit we found nowadays. Do you think we they're don't smarter than sli- us? Hundred percent. Yeah. Egyptians yeah. back then. And just like we were saying about like how Native Americans because they they developed their community in America by themselves yeah. and Europeans did. Look at just just in that short time span. Europeans went down that path and led Europeans to do European things, the Crusades, the mm-hmm. technology, where Native Americans, because they were isolated, went down <clears throat> the path of like living spiritually, living with nature, not taking more than you need. At the same time, just two different locations. Now think about if humanity lived before 12,000 years ago. What path as a Earth did they go down up until they were wiped out by the Younger Dryas Impact, which is, yeah. I love, that's my science stuff, but like... What what technologies did they advance? What um, communities did they advance? Like, what was their mindset? Maybe they were like the Native Americans, not like us, where okay. they lived with Earth, not abusing Earth for all of her minerals and riches. I think you know they relied on Earth's natural resource or our universe's natural resources in order to figure things out. Yeah, you know, whether no matter what it was, whether it was a sense of time. Um, or, you know, and what to call it through that. Um, yeah. You know, you can use that for a number of things, farming and agriculture. I, I think they developed in a completely different way. And yes, I do believe in ancient civilizations. Hmm. I think that, I think humanity has been around for way longer than we realize. There was a, there was a, a science article that came from my Facebook the other day that they found a 1.2 million year old obsidian axe factory. And and when they say factory, I think they just found like a pile of like sticks shaped in the same manner mm-hmm. and a bunch of obsidian, you know, the, the stone, obsidian yeah. stone, like shaped into axes and then probably like a pile of like bindings. That would be like a factory to yeah. me, like 1.2. But if they were doing that 1.2 million years ago, how many, I talked to Sean about this. Our civilization is 12,000 years old, right? As far as we know. Mm-hmm. In 1.2 million years, you could have a thousand 12 year, 12,000 year old civilizations, a thousand of them. And what if insane. one of those civilizations got to go longer than 12,000 years? They went 20,000 years with no meteor impacts or no volcanoes or no nukes going off. How much more advanced could we be in 8,000 more years? That's what I'm saying, bro. There could be. Aliens could be us. They could be just a civilization that was it's like, scary yo, there's a about. meteor coming. We got to get the fuck out of here. And they're like, okay, let's get in our spaceships. 
So you know what's real are those anti-gravity ships. So are those... Do you, you know mean? what I'm talking about, John? No. No. What do you mean? Like the anti-gravity ships? The current, the current UFO sightings. The current the UFO sightings. So oh, the, the ones that have been going on like the last couple months. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Tic Tac. Okay. Yes. Right, so, yeah, so say that's the, the those, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, what the one is called. <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> They're all the same. Tic Tacs and Tic Tacs are <laughs> same TikTok. civilization. Yeah. yeah oh my but God. now, do you believe that those are from some advanced ancient civilization that is Earth-based, or are we dealing with aliens, or are we dealing with a government? That's currently living, current state that got to that technology. There's only three options. You know what I mean? Yeah, off world, off world, world pre old, world, or on world, world, current. Yeah. yeah. So what? What do you guys think it is? Oof. I'm inclined to say it's on world old tech found that has been modified to new world. I mean, Barb Lazar said it in Joe Rogan's podcast. They excavated one. So like, but he also did say that they fed dig. them bullshit information so they would that's know where the bullshit inf- where, the inf- where the that's leaks came true. from. So that I don't think that's a plausible explanation. I'm sorry. I agree with what you're I, saying. Yeah. So I also believe though that they were uh, that they were ancients. They probably did find them. There was yeah. probably a civilization that got to the technology through vibrations yep. or mm-hmm. whatever other tech that isn't what we're used to now. Dude. Rather than aliens to get here, because if you just understand space, it takes. So much energy to travel that amount of distance. So I'd rather unless you have wormholes. Yeah, wormholes or black holes or I'm just saying. Unless you have what's wormholes. that thing that they're they're um that energy thing that they're creating to splice open time or um oh a, a particle collider. Yes. Yeah. Particle collider. Yeah. That's yielding some interesting results because that's quantum computing. Yeah. They're figuring out that they can have they can mess with a what is it what are they messing with an atom here or a quark. In one spot, and it changes the quark in another spot. I don't yeah, like why. Um, why do we gotta fuck with shit, dude? You know what just, creeps why, me out? Why? 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 Do you just, know what, just John? Do you know what creeps me out? What if one of these experiments opens a black hole, and then we're we're done? In this, we just get sucked into, or it just one of these experiments just wipes out all of humanity, and we wouldn't even experience it. We would just gone. Do you know they were afraid of that when they Next dropped universe. the first nukes? They had no idea if they were going to start happen the by splitting whole atoms? atmosphere on fire. They were like, "Yeah, we might burn everybody." <laughs> the, well, the ozone just it. might yeah. just be. They had hey, no idea. And they sh- still were like, "Boop, Yo, drop it." So this is me and you. I was the asshole that was like, "Well, let's just fucking try it anyway." <laughs> and yeah, you're like, there's, you're, there's, like there's, you're like, no, no, Steve, we need to figure this out. We need to plan this. Like, like, there's, 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 two guys, there's two guys. There's two guys standing over the button, and then all of a sudden, one goes. You did it. <laughs> right? Was it his finger or the one that pushed yeah. it on top? <laughs> Wasn't oh, me. Oh, man. Yeah, that would have sucked. That could have killed us all. I don't know. No more podcasts. How do you think? How do you think? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it makes you so Never would have started. A, I'm ha- Dude, I'm having such I love a good this. time. Isn't it fun? This is, this is amazing. I just, I could do this every day, but me my too. team won't let me. No. <laughs> my team. Yeah. My team won't let me. They're like, listen, um, we need some sort of life outside of this and work. I know. <laughs> no, and that's so like we were saying earlier in the podcast, yeah. like I have this roller coaster of emotions every day because we're adults now, we have business. This is one of the only times I, I I truly look forward to like good conversation because I don't think about anything else. I just get lost. Like I I don't even know what time it is. I just I just yeah. get lost in a good conversation. It makes me forget about Unless we talk about it, how fucked life is. Yeah, like life is so goddamn complex. I think it's just, I think it's just the demands, the the demands of our, our our current world. You know that is just it's getting to the point where it's, I disagree. Okay, I think it's I think it's a human condition. I think life okay. is work. I think no matter what society you're living in, I think life is, I think surviving, just being alive is work. Think about this. The day you're born, your heart never stops beating. Mm -hmm. Life is work. And it just, even if we were cavemen, we wouldn't be worried about paying bills. We'd be worried about getting fucking eaten by saber-toothed tiger and making sure that we had food for our our offspring that day. And that would feel to us in that moment as a caveman like we do when we're like, man, I got fucking bills to pay. And man, I got to go to work. And I really don't want to go to work. Caveman's like looking at his spear like, Man, I really don't want to fucking go out there. I don't want to sharpen this. I don't want to fucking go out there. Uh, 
like, this fire is looking really good yeah, right now. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like me, I'm like putting on my boots in the morning. Him, he's like sharpening his fucking spears. Like fucking again today. I gotta the go Orion out there. The Belt episode is on right now. I really don't want to go away from this. <laughs> the Aurora Borealis is on tonight, man. I don't want to fucking go out there. So that's what I'm saying. Is like I don't think it's, it's the a- final season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a. I think that goes back to what I said. I think we are selfish in our mindsets. I think we we always, as human beings, think that like, oh, this is like the hardest time ever. This is the worst. But in reality, it's just the worst for us. It's just the worst for us right now. Like, yes, right now sucks. But I think for all humans, there's always been something that has sucked. It's always been shitty, man. Like, I, it, it, it never has... Not, it's... My saying, I told my wife this, we figured this out on the drive back from South Carolina. I said, life is work and work is hard. That's life. The whole thing is... The whole thing is, and, man. And, and, I mean, I'll push now, man. Like, I really feel like our world just... If you think about the demands it takes, I, I, from as I, opposed to just existing and being... I don't disagree. It is super hard to be alive. And just right think now. of even before doing anything, the demands that are being requested of this world. What do you What do you mean? Be more specific. The demands that are being requested of this world. Just think of of having to have a roof over your head, a place yes. to live, a, and it could be anywhere in this world, right? Just think of the demands that comes along with it in today's world. That house, that that roof over your head. Or but, even a even a piece of land. Well, that's what I was going to say. Reside, even before you even get to the roof over here. But head. how much do you think of that? How much of that do you think is put on us by ourselves? Because, like I said, I, the reason I moved it's to 100% my one hundred percent ours. Yeah, yeah. Like we put that we 100%. put that onto ourselves because yeah. you can make your life a lot simpler. And this, I think, it's this, very very hard to yeah. do so though in this society. It's very hard because yeah. I'm trying to do that. Like that's why I moved where I moved mm-hmm. because I wanted to. <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to. To grow my own food. I wanted to fix my own house. But th- I wanted to but live think of that. More land. Think of how it was hard. But it think was... of how specific you had to look for a place to live in order to be self sufficient. You're right. How hard was that? It was very hard. Why? It is, it is <laughs> probably probably because of because they want to make you go to grocery stores and go to yeah, a little bit of capitalism, a little bit <laughs> of slighted capitalism, <laughs> a little bit. Well, but this is this is this is what I was saying. Is okay again the. Capitalism is a description. The capitalism that happened in America is a bunch of smart people figured out how to funnel all the money to them and then they kept it. But the true capitalism, it's like, I wish everything was, I wish there wasn't a dollar. It's having a need for capital. Yeah, I wish it was like, I, I wish it was like bartering though. I wish it was just like, hey I man, I grow some really good strawberries and I like your yes, goats. Yes. Like, can we? <laughs> that's, but I, that's how I view capitalism. Like, yeah. you have a need, I have a need. Yeah. And then I meet it with, but then you're like, well, somebody's like, well, I got metal. And you're like, well, I need metal to build shit with. And that's like, that's like, like that, that supply and demand, like that need. Mm-hmm. Not this, not this America capitalism that got created where these big giant conglomerates know how to play the fucking rules and laws so that they end up with all the tax breaks and money of everybody. That's, but that's, that's like what I mean is like people, yeah, but people shit on capitalism. And I don't think that's the America fucked up capitalism. Like our government allowed it. Like lobbying is an America problem. Mm-hmm. A lobbying is these big companies throwing money at po- politicians so that they make laws that the rest of us have to follow. That's not really capitalism. That's bribery. Yeah, that's what fucked up America. You know what I mean? These big corporations just figured out the more money I get, the more I can change it in my favor. But I think true, true capitalism is like is good for us. Like the bartering system, the supply and the demand, the, the need, the want. I mean, the, the the actual needs to 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 live and survive in this world aren't simple. Very simple. They're very very simple. They're very simple. I do it. I try to focus on that every day. Like I said, have my own chickens, so I have my own eggs. And it's it's hard. But you know what's really fucking hard to do is say that and then also have a business where you try to push. You know, a service or, you know, sales like to make I do. money, to buy nice shit, and to then have a leather couch. It's just like, okay, it's like, how much can I fucking preach about this shit and talk about it and follow it and support it? But at the same time, like, well, fuck, I'm also kind of, 
I have to be in it as well. But it's again, you it's know? a fine line. But no, by no. choice, well, like, said, I, I could easily move somewhere else, and you know, I could move into China and the mountains over there, or just, even here in the country. Yeah, really. and just be off the grid. But, but, but I think it's a no. I think it's a fine line. Yeah. I think it's a fine line. I think it's a lot of small changes that we can all make, mm-hmm. and I think it's happening. Like I said, that's I'm I'm a person of action. It's why I moved to where I moved. It's why I do a lot of what I do. It's it's a, it's like the aggression and assertiveness fine line, like. Mm-hmm. Like you can still have a business and still, you know, try to make more money, but you're still being fair about it. You yeah. don't overcharge when you can, but you're also being conscious of the fact that you want to live a little bit of a simpler life. I think you're doing a good job. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, but I think more people need to do that. I think more people need to be aware of things. I think to balance things out, you know, we need to ride that fine line. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, I, I think America has just, unfortunately, corporate America has taken it to the extreme and fucked the rest of us. Yeah, you see, you know, and as, as amazing social media is, is, you know, getting, you know, your business out there, connecting with people that are, you know, you're able to connect with someone all the way across the world, which is in a matter of seconds, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, but it's, where the fuck was I? <laughs> That's about right. I was just going to say, what's our time? 233. 233. With that, end of with train, that being said, with that train being derailed and that thought process gone, it's fucking gone. John Flowers, <laughs> what a great freaking podcast! That was Thank amazing. You so much. That was fun. Thank you for. And we good? Thanks for coming in the shop. Bye, everybody.